Talmud, Mas Mejala A C H A P T E R I Mishnah the Megillah is read on the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th of Adar. Never earlier and never later cities which have been walled since the days of Joshua son of Nun read on the 15th villages and large towns read on the 14th the villages. However, may sometimes push the reading forward to the court day. How does this work out if the 14th of Adar falls on Monday the villages and large towns read? On that day and the walled places on the next day if it falls on Tuesday or on Wednesday the villages push the reading forward to the court day the large towns read on the day itself and the walled places on the next day if the 14th falls on Thursday the villages and large towns read on that day and the walled places on the next day if it falls on Friday the villages push the reading forward to the court day and the large towns and walled places read on the day itself if it falls on Sabbath the villages and large towns push the reading forward to the court day and the walled places read on the next day if it falls on Sunday the villages push the reading forward to the court day the large towns read on the same day and the walled cities on the day following tomorrow the villa is read on the 11th whence is this derived how can you ask whence is this derived surely it is as we stay further on the sages made a concession to the villages allowing them to push the Reading forward to the court day so that they should have leisure to supply food and water for their brethren in the large towns. What we mean by our question is this let us see now all these dates were laid down by the men of the great assembly. For if you should deny this and affirm that the men of the great assembly laid down only the 14th and 15th, is it possible that the later rabbis should have come and annul the regulation made by the men of the great assembly? Seeing that we have learned one Beth Din cannot annul the ordinances of another unless it is superior to it in number and in wisdom, obviously, therefore, all these days must have been laid down by the men of the great assembly. And we ask, therefore, where are they hinted in the scripture? Our shaman B. Ab replied in the name of our Yohan, and scripture says to confirm these days of Purim in their times, which indicates that they laid down many times for them, but this text is required for its literal meaning. If that were all scripture could say simply at the appointed time what then is implied by their times a large number of times but still I may say that the expression their times is required to indicate that the time of one is not the same as the time of the other in that case scripture should say simply their time why does it say their times so that you may infer from this all of them but cannot I say that their times means numerous times the expression their times is to be interpreted in the same way as we should interpret their time just as their time would indicate two days so their times indicates two in addition but why not make these the twelfth and thirteenth for the reason given elsewhere by our Samuel B. Isaac that the thirteenth is a time of assembly for all and no special indication is required for it in the text so we may say here that the thirteenth day is a time of assembly and no special indication is required for it in the text but why not say that the Sixteenth and seventeenth are meant it is written and it shall not pass our Samuel B. Namani however explained the scripture says as the days wherein the Jews had rest from their enemies the expression the days would have sufficed and we have as the days to include the eleventh and the twelfth but cannot I say rather the twelfth and thirteenth our Samuel B. Isaac said the thirteenth is a time of assembly for all and does not require special indication but cannot I say the sixteenth and the seventeenth it is written and it shall not pass why did our Samuel B. Namani not derive the rule from the expression in their times he does not accept the distinction made above between time their time and their times and why did our Shaman B. Abba not derive the rule from the expression as the days he can say to you this is meant to make the rule apply to future generations Rabbi B. Barhanna said in the name of our Yohan and this rule stated in the mission is the ruling of our Akiva the Anonymous authority who draws the distinction between time their time and their times but according to the sages the Megillah is to be read only on the proper day the following was a distant refutation of this our Judah said when does this rule hold good when the years are properly fixed and Israel reside upon their own soil but in these days since people reckon from it the Megillah is to be read only on the proper day now which authority is our Judah here following shall I say our Akiva this cannot be because according to him the regulation is in force in these days also it must be then that he follows the rabbis and even according to them we read on the other days at any rate when the years are properly fixed and Israel reside on their own soil is not this a refutation of our Yohanan it is some report as follows Rabbi B. Barhanna said in the name of our Yohanan this rule follows the ruling of our Akiva the anonymous authority but the sages held that in these days since people reckon from if we read it only on the proper day it has been taught to the same effect our Judah said when does this rule hold good when the years are properly fixed and Israel reside upon their own soil but in these days since people reckon from it it is read only on the proper day our Ashi noted a contradiction between two statements of our Judah Talmud, Mas Mejalabi and therefore attributed the statement in the Beritha to our Jose son of our Judah he said can our Judah really have said that in these days? Since people reckon from it it is read only on the proper day to this may be opposed the following our Judah said when do they push forward the reading in places where the villagers go to town on Monday and Thursday but in places where they do not go to town on Monday and Thursday it is read only on the proper day but at any rate in places where they do go to town on Monday and Thursday it is read on the earlier dates even in these times he accordingly ascribed the statement in the Beritha. To our Jose son of Arjuda and because he finds a contradiction between two statements of Arjuda is he entitled to ascribe the one in the Beritha to our Jose son of Arjuda our Ashi had heard some report the statement in the name of Arjuda and some reported in the name of our Jose son of Arjuda and to avoid making Arjuda contradict himself he said that the one who ascribed the statement to Arjuda was not reporting accurately while the one who ascribed it to our Jose son of Judah was reporting accurately cities which have been walled since the days of Joshua son of Nun read on the 15th whence is this ruling derived Rob replied because scripture says therefore do the Jews of the villages that dwell in the unwalled towns etc since the villages are to read on the 14th the walled towns must read on the 15th but why not say that the villages should read on the 14th and those in walled towns not at all but are they not also Israelites and moreover is it not Written from India into Ethiopia, but why not say that the villages should read on the 14th and those in walled towns on both the 14th and 15th, as it is written that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Adar and the 15th day of the same yearly? If the text had said the 14th day and we the 15th, you would have been right now. However, that it is written the 14th day and we at the 15th, the F comes and makes a distinction so that the one set is on the 14th and the other set on the 15th. But why not say that the villages are on the 14th and those surrounded by a wall can celebrate if they like on the 14th or if they like on the 15th? The text says in their seasons the season of one is not the same as the season of the other. But why not say that they should celebrate on the 13th? They must do as Susa did. We have accounted for the celebration of Purim. How do we know that the recital? Of the Megillah must be on these days. The text says that these days should be remembered and kept remembering is put on the same footing as keeping our mission. It does not take the same view as the following ten as it has been taught. Our Joshua B. Korha says cities which have been walled since the days of Ahasuerus read on the 15th. What is the reason of our Joshua B. Korha? They must be like Susa just as Susa has been walled since the days of Ahasuerus and reads on the 15th. So every city that has been walled since the days of Ahasuerus reads on the 15th. What then is the reason of our Tana? He draws an analogy between the two occurrences of the word Parasa villagers. It is written here, therefore, the Jews of the villages Haparazim and it is written in another place beside the unwalled Haparasa towns a great many, just as there the reference is to towns which were not walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun. So here the reference is to towns which were not walled. In the days of Joshua son of Nun I can understand why our Joshua B. Korha did not adopt the view of Artana he does not accept the analogy of Parasia and Parasia but why does not Artana accept the view of our Joshua B. Korha you ask why does he not why because he draws the analogy of Parasia with Parasia of course what the questioner meant was this on the view of Artana whom did Susa follow it followed neither the villages nor the walled towns Rabba or as some say Cuddy replied Susa was an exception because a miracle was performed in it we can understand according to the view of Artana why the text should say city and city town and town city and city to make a distinction between those which were walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun and those which were walled in the days of Ahasuerus town and town likewise to distinguish between Susa and other towns but according to our Joshua B. Korha it is true we can account for city and city as
and further Arista has said the men and the Samak in the tablets Talmud, Mas Mejla remained in place by a miracle that is so they were in use but people did not know which form came in the middle of a word and which one at the end and the watchman came and ordained that the open forms should be in the middle of a word and the closed forms at the end but when all is said and done we have the text these are the commandments which implies that no prophet was destined ever to introduce an innovation hereafter what we must say therefore is that they were forgotten and the watchman established them again our Jeremiah or some say our high Abba also said the Targum of the Pentateuch was composed by Ankalos the proselyte under the guidance of our Eliezer and our Joshua the Targum of the prophets was composed by Jonathan Ben Utiel under the guidance of Hadi Zechariah and Malachi and the land of Israel thereupon quaked over an area of 400 parsangs by 400 parsangs. And the bath coal came forth and exclaimed, Who is this that has revealed my secrets to mankind? Jonathan B. Utiel thereupon arose and said, It is I who have revealed thy secrets to mankind. It is fully known to thee that I have not done this for my own honor or for the honor of my father's house, but for thy honor I have done it that dissension may not increase in Israel. He further sought to reveal by a targum the inner meaning of the hagiographer, but a bath coal went forth and said, Enough what? Was the reason because the date of the Messiah is foretold in it, but did Ankalos the proselyte compose the targum to the Pentateuch? Has not R.I.K. said in the name of our Hanangal who had it from Rab what is meant by the text? And they read in the book in the law of God with an interpretation, and they gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading, and they read in the book in the law of God. This indicates the Hebrew text with an interpretation, this indicates the targum, and they gave it. Since this indicates the verse stops and caused them to understand the reading, this indicates the accentuation, or according to another version, the Masoretic notes these had been forgotten and were now established again. How was it that the land did not quake because of the translation of the Pentateuch? While it did quake because of that of the prophets, the meaning of the Pentateuch is expressed clearly, but the meaning of the prophets is in some things expressed clearly and in others. Enigmatically, for instance, it is written in that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem as the morning of Hadad in the valley of Mehidon. And our Joseph commenting on this said, Were it not for the Targum of this verse, we should not know what it means. It runs as follows On that day shall there be great morning in Jerusalem, like the morning of Ahab, son of Omri, who was killed by Hadad son of Rimon in Ramathiliad, and like the morning of Josiah, son of Ammon, who was. Killed by Pharaoh the Lame in the plain of Megiddo, and I Daniel alone saw the vision for the men that were with me, saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. Who were these men? Are Jeremiah, or some say are Hibi Abba said these were Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. They were superior to him in one way, and he was superior to them in another. They were superior to him because they were prophets, and he was not a prophet, he was superior to them because he saw on this occasion, and they did not see, but if they did not see, why were they frightened? Although they themselves did not see their star, Sarabin said, We learn from this that if a man is seized with fright, though he sees nothing, the reason is that his star sees what is his remedy, he should recite the Shema. If he is in a place which is foul, he should move away from it for cubits. If he cannot do this, he should say this formula, the goat at the butchers is fatter than I am now that you. Have decided that the word city and city have a homiletical purpose. What is the purpose of the words family and family in the same verse? Our Jose Bihan and replied, This contains a reference to the families of the priests and levites and indicates that they should desist from their temple service in order to come and hear the reading of the Megillah. For so said Rab Judah in the name of Rab the priests at their temple service, the levites on their platform, the lay Israelites at their station. All desist from their service in order to hear the reading of the Megillah. It has been taught to the same effect. Priests at their temple service, levites on their platform, lay Israelites at their station. All desist from their service in order to come and hear the reading of the Megillah. It was in reliance on this dictum that the members of the house of Rabbi were wanted to desist from the study of the Torah in order to come and hear the reading of the Megillah. They are due to force from it. Case of the temple service. If the service which is so important may be abandoned, how much more the study of the Torah? But is the temple service more important than the study of the Torah? Surely it is written, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, and he fell on his face. Now, how could he do such a thing, seeing that our Joshua be Levi has said that it is forbidden to a man to greet another by night for fear that he is a demon? It was different there because he said to him, I am captain of the host of the Lord, but perhaps he was lying. We take it for granted that they do not utter the name of heaven vainly. He said to him, This evening you neglected the regular afternoon sacrifice, and now you have neglected the study of the Torah. Joshua replied, In regard to which of them have you come? He answered, I have come now straightway. Joshua tarried that night in the midst of the valley Hayamek and Ar. Yohanan said Talmud, Mas Mejlabi this shows that he tarried in the depths of the Halachai and our Samuel Biyuni also said the study of the Torah is greater than the offering of the daily sacrifices as it says I have come now there is no contradiction in the one case the study of an individual is meant in the other that of the whole people but is that of an individual unimportant have we not learned women when morning on a festival make a dirge but do not beat the breast our Ishmael says if they are near the beer they can beat the breast on new moon Hanukkah and Purim they may make a dirge and beat the breast but on neither the one nor the other do they wail and in reference to this Rabbi Biyuni said the festival involves no restrictions in the case of a scholar still less Hanukkah and Purim you are speaking of the honor to be paid to the Torah the honor to be paid to the learning of an individual is important the study of an individual is comparatively unimportant. Rabbi said, There is no question in my mind that as between the temple service and the reading of the Megillah, the reading of the Megillah takes priority for the reason given by our Jose Bihan, and as between the study of the Torah and the reading of the Megillah, the reading of the Megillah takes priority since the members of the house of Rabbi based themselves on the dictum of our Jose as between the study of the Torah and attending to a Mehmizwa, attending to a Mehmizwa takes precedence since. It has been taught the study of the Torah may be neglected in order to perform the last rites or to bring a bride to the canopy as between the temple service and attending to a Mehmizwa, attending to a Mehmizwa takes precedence as we learn from the text or for his sister as it has been taught or for his sister. What is the point of these words? Suppose he was on his way to kill his paschal lamb or to circumcise his son and he heard that a near relative had died, shall I assume that he should? Defile himself, you must say he should not defile himself, shall I assume then that just as he does not defile himself for his sister, so he should not defile himself for a Mehmizwa. It says significantly, or for his sister, it is for his sister that he may not defile himself, but he may defile himself for a Mehmizwa. Rabbi propounded the question as between the reading of the Megillah and attending to a Mehmizwa, which takes precedence, shall I say that the reading of the Megillah takes precedence in order to proclaim the miracle, or does perhaps the burying of the Mehmizwa take precedence because of the respect due to human beings? After propounding the question, he himself answered it, saying, Burying the Mehmizwa takes precedence, since a master has said, Great is the obligation to pay due respect to human beings, since it overrides a negative precept of the Torah. The text above states, Our Joshua believe I said a city, and all that adjoins it, and all that is taken in by. The eye with it is reckoned as city a tana commented adjoining even if it is not visible and visible even if it is not adjoining now we understand what is meant by visible even though not adjoining this can occur for instance with a city situated on the top of a hill but how can there be adjoining but not visible our Jeremiah replied if it is situated in a valley our Joshua believe I further said a city which was first settled and then walled is reckoned as a village what is the reason because it is written and if a man sell a dwelling house of a walled city one that is which was first walled and then settled but not first settled and then walled our Joshua believe I also said a city in which there are not ten men of leisure is reckoned as a village what does he tell us we have already learned this what is a large town one in which there are ten men of leisure if there are less than this it is reckoned as a village he had to point out that the rule applies to a city even though leisure. People come there from outside our Joshua believe I also said a city which has been laid waste and afterwards settled is reckoned as a city what is meant by laid waste shall I say that its walls have been destroyed in which case if it became settled it is reckoned as a city but otherwise not
Profited by the miracle, then wrought our Joshua Belevi further said, If Purim falls on a Sabbath, discussions and discourses are held on the subject of the day. Why mention Purim? The same rule applies to festivals also, as it has been taught. Moses laid down a rule for the Israelites that they should discuss and discourse on the subject of the day, the laws of Passover on Passover, the laws of Pentecost on Pentecost, and the laws of Tabernacles on Tabernacles. It was necessary to state the rule. Separately, in the case of Purim, for you might suggest that we should forbid this for fear of breaking the rule of Rabbah. We are therefore told that this is not so. Our Joshua Belevi further said, It is the duty of a man to read the Megillah in the evening and to repeat it in the day, as it is written, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou answerest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. The students took this to mean that the Megillah should be read at night and the mission relating to it. Should be learned in the morning. Our Jeremiah, however, said to them, It has been explained to me by our high Abba that the word repeat here has the same meaning as when, for instance, men say, I will go through the section and repeat it. It has also been stated, Our Helbo said in the name of Allah, Bury it is a man's duty to recite the Megillah at night and to repeat it the next day, as it says to the end, that my glory may sing praise to thee by day and not be silent by night, O Lord my God, I will. Give thanks to thee forever. The villages, however, may push the reading forward to the court day. Our Hannah said the sages made a concession to the villages by allowing them to push the reading forward to the court day in order that they might furnish food and water to their brethren in the city's Talmud. Mas Mejala be this would show would it not that the regulation is for the benefit of the cities, but we have learned if Purim falls on Monday, the villages and large towns read on that day now if. It is as you say they should push the reading forward to the previous court day this would bring it to the tent and the sages did not fix the tent as a possible day come and here if it falls on Thursday the villages and large towns read on that same day now if it is as you say they should push the reading forward to the previous court day which is the 11th we do not shift it from one court day to another come and here again our Judah says when is the reading pushed forward in places where the villagers come into town on Mondays and Thursdays but in places where they do not come into town on Mondays and Thursdays it is read only on the proper day now if you assume that the regulation is for the benefit of the cities because they do not come into town on Mondays and Thursdays are the cities to be deprived of the benefit do not read in the dictum of Arhana in order that they may furnish food and water but read because they furnish food and water to their brethren in the cities, how does this work out if it falls on Monday? Villages and larger towns read on that same day, etc. How is it that in the first clause of the mission the dates of the month are mentioned and in the second the days of the week? Since in the second clause the dates of the month would have to go backwards, the mission prefers to mention the days if it falls on Friday, etc. Which authority does our mission follow? You may say either Rabbi or our Jose, how Rabbi as it has been taught if it falls on Friday, villages and large towns push the reading forward to the court day and walled cities react on the day itself. Rabbi said, I maintain that towns should not have to shift their date, but both one and the other read on the day itself. What is the reason of the first tana? Because it is written every year just as every year towns read before cities. So in this case, towns should read before cities, but why not argue thus every year just as every year towns have not to shift their date? So here towns should not have to shift their date. There is a special reason for not reasoning thus here since this is impracticable. What is Rabbi's reason? It is written every year just as in most years the towns have not to shift their date. So here they should not have to shift their date. But why not reason thus every year just as in most years towns read before walled cities. So here towns should read before walled cities. There is a special reason for not arguing thus here because this is impracticable. How our Jose as it has been taught if it falls on Friday walled cities and villages push the reading forward to the court day and large towns read on the day itself. Our Jose said walled cities do not read before towns but both read on the day itself. What is the reason of the first tana? Because it is written every year just as in most years towns react on the 14th and their time is not the same as the time of the walled city. So here towns should read on the 14th and their time should not be the same as the time of the walled cities, but why not reason thus every year just as in most years walled cities do not read before towns, so here walled cities should not read before towns. Here the case is different because it cannot be avoided. What is our Jose's reason? It says every year just as in most years walled cities do not read before towns, so here walled cities should not read before towns, but why not reason thus every year just as in most years the time of one is not the same as the time of the other, so here the time of one should not be the same as the time of the other. Here the case is different because it cannot be avoided, but did Rabbi really hold that towns should not shift their time to the court day? Has it not been taught if it falls on Sabbath villages push the reading forward to the court day and large towns read on Friday and walled cities on Sunday? Rabbi said my view is that since the towns have to shift their time, they may as well. Shifted to the court day are the two cases parallel in this last case the proper time is Sabbath and since they must shift they can shift further but in our case the proper time is Friday whose authority is followed in this dictum enunciated by our helbo in the name of our who not if Purim falls on Sabbath all shift the reading to the court day all shift their reading do you say how can this be seeing that we have the walled cities which read on the Sunday what we should say is all who are shifted are shifted to the court day which authority you ask rabbi but at any rate all agree that the Megillah is not to be read on Sabbath what is the reason rabbi replied all are under obligation to read the Megillah but not all are competent to read it and there is therefore a danger that one may take the scroll in his hand and go to an expert to be instructed and in doing so convey it four cubits in a public domain this is also the reason for not blowing the shofar on Sabbath and for not carrying the lulab, our Joseph said it is because the poor are anxiously awaiting the reading of the Megillah. It has been taught to the same effect, although it has been laid down that villages push the reading forward to the court day. Contributions are collected and distributed on the same day, although it has been laid down. On the contrary, it is because it has been laid down. Right, therefore, since it has been laid down that villages push the reading forward to the court day. Contributions are collected and distributed on the same day because the poor are waiting anxiously for the reading of the Megillah. But Talmud, Mas Mejala rejoicing is kept only at the proper season. Rab said on the actual day of Purim, the Megillah can be read even by an individual, but on the alternative days it should be read only in a company of ten. R.C. However, said whether on the actual day or on the alternative days it should be read only in a company of ten. In a case which actually occurred, Rab. Gave way to the opinion of R.C. but could Rab actually have said this did not Rab Judah the son of our Samuel B. Shalaf say in the name of Rab if Purim falls on Sabbath Friday is the proper time Friday the proper time surely Sabbath is the proper time what Rab must have meant therefore is this the alternative time is like the proper time just as at the proper time the Megillah may be read by an individual so at the alternative time it may be read by an individual no for the reading of the Megillah Rab requires 10 what then did he mean by saying Friday is the proper time his intention was to reject the opinion of Rabbi who said that since the towns had to shift their time they might as well shift to the court day here therefore Rab informs us that Friday is the proper day to which they should shift Mishnah what is reckoned a large town one which has in it 10 men of El Elsher one that has fewer is reckoned a village in respect of these it was laid down that they should be Pushed forward but not postpone the time however of bringing the wood for the priests of keeping the fast of the ninth of above offering the festival sacrifice and of assembling the people is to be postponed till after Sabbath but not pushed forward although it was laid down that the times of reading the Megillah are to be pushed forward but not postponed it is permissible on these alternative days to mourn to fast and to distribute gifts to the poor Arjuna said when is this in places where people come to town on Mondays and Thursdays in places however where they do not come to town either on Mondays or Thursdays the Megillah is read only on its proper day tomorrow ten men of leisure attended taught the ten unoccupied men who attend synagogue in respect of these it was laid down that they should be pushed forward but not postponed what is the reason our Abba said in the name of Samuel the text says and he shall not go further our Abba further said in the name of Samuel once to we know that years are not to be counted by days because it says it is the first to you of the months of the year which implies that you reckon a year by months but not by days the rabbis of Caesarea said in the name of our Abba how do we know that a month is not reckoned by its hours because it says until a month of days you reckon a month by days but you do not reckon a month
Laying out of hands not however burnt offerings while Beth Hillel say both burnt offerings and peace offerings may be brought and hands may be laid on Rabbah said the meaning is the festival sacrifice may be postponed for the whole period of the festival sacrifice but not more as we have learned if one did not bring a festival sacrifice on the first day of the festival he may go on to do so throughout the festival including the last day of the festival terminated without his having brought it. Festival sacrifice he need not bring another in compensation Arashi said it means that the festival sacrifice may be postponed for the whole period of the festival sacrifice and even on Pentecost which is only one day it may be postponed for seven days as we have learned Beth Hillel agreed that if Pentecost falls on Sabbath the day for killing the sacrifices after the Sabbath our Eliezer said in the name of our Hanan Rabbi planted a shoot on Purim Talmud, Mos Mejala B and bathed in it. Bath house of the marketplace of Sephori on the 17th of Tammuz and sought to abolish the fast of the 9th of but his colleagues would not consent our Abba to venture to remark Rabbi this was not the case what happened was that the fast of Abba that year fell on Sabbath and they postponed it till after Sabbath and he said to them since it has been postponed let it be postponed altogether but the sages would not agree he festival peace sacrifice Hajigah may be brought this. Offering is not brought till the intermediate days are Eliezer thereupon applied to himself the verse better are two than one but how could Rabbi have planted a shoot on Purim seeing that our Joseph has learned we read in connection with Purim gladness and feasting and a good day gladness this teaches that it is forbidden on these days to mourn feasting this teaches that it is forbidden on them to fast a good day this teaches that it is forbidden on them to do work the fact is that Rabbi belonged to a place which kept Purim on the 14th and when he planted it was on the 15th is this so was not Rabbi in Tiberias and Tiberias was walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun the fact is that Rabbi was in a place which kept on the 15th and when he planted it was the 14th but was he certain that Tiberias was walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun seeing that Hezekiah read the Megillah in Tiberias both on the 14th and on the 15th being uncertain whether it had been walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun or not Hezekiah was in doubt but Rabbi was certain but even supposing he was certain was he permitted to do the seeing that it is written in Megillah Tyanath the 14th day and the 15th day are the days of Purim on which there is to be no morning and Rabbi said the only purpose of mentioning these days in Megillah Tyanath was to make whatever is forbidden on the one forbidden on the other also this applies only to morning and Fasting but for abstention from work one day and no more is prescribed is that so did not Rab see a man sowing flax on Purim and curse him so that the flax did not grow there he the man was doing it on the day which he ought to have kept Rab the son of Rabbah said you may even say that Rabbi planted on the day which he ought to have kept the Jews bound themselves in the days of Esther to abstain from mourning and fasting but not from work since first it is written gladness and feasting and a good day but afterwards it is written that they should make them days of feasting and gladness and a good day is not mentioned why then did Rab curse that man it was a case of things which are permitted but others make a practice of abstaining from them but in Rabbi's place this was not the practice or if you like I can say that they did in fact make a practice of this and Rabbi planted a festive shoot as we have learned if these days pass and they are still not answered they Abstain to a certain extent from business, from building and from planting, from betrothing and from marrying and attend a top building here means festive building, planting means festive planting. What is festive building if one builds a wedding residence for his son on the occasion of his marriage? What is a festive planting if one plants a royal abar The text above state Hezekiah read in Tiberias on the 14th and on the 15th being doubtful whether it had been walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun or not but could he have been in doubt about Tiberias seeing that it is written and the fortified cities were Zidimzer and Hamath and Rikath and Kinnereth and it is generally agreed that Rikath is Tiberias the reason why he was doubtful was because one side is bounded by the lake if so why was he in doubt it certainly was not walled as it has been taught which has a wall and not merely a fence of houses round about this excludes Tiberias the lake forming its wall. In respect of the houses of a walled town he was not in doubt where he was in doubt was in respect of reading the Megillah he asked what constitutes the difference between villages and walled towns which are mentioned in connection with the reading of the Megillah is it that the former are exposed and the latter are not exposed in which case Tiberius belongs to the former being also exposed or is it that the latter are protected and the former are not protected in which case Tiberius belongs to the latter being protected that was why he was in doubt R.C. read the Megillah in Husel on the 14th and on the 15th being in doubt whether it had been walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun or not according to another report R.C. said Husel of the house of Benjamin was walled in the days of Joshua son of Nun or Yohanan said when I was a boy I made a statement about which I afterwards questioned the old man Talmud, Mos Mejale, and it was found that I was right I Said Hamath is Tiberius and why was it called Hamath on account of the hot springs Ham of Tiberius Rikath is Sephoris and why was it called Rikath because it slopes down like the bankrupt of a river Kinnereth is Genesareth and why was it called Kinnereth because its fruits are sweet like the music of the harp Kinnereth said is there anyone who can maintain that Rikath is not Tiberius seeing that when a man dies here in Babylonia they mourn for him there in Tiberius as follows. Great was he in Shishash and he has a name in Rikath and when the coffin is taken there they mourn for him thus ye lovers of the remnants dwellers in Rikath go forth and receive the slaughter of the depths when Arzara departed a certain mourner opened his dirge thus the land of Shinar conceived and bore him the beauteous land brought up her delight woe to me Seth Rikath for her precious instrument is lost no said Rabbah Hamath is the hot springs of Gera Rikath is Tiberius and Kinnereth is. Genesaret why is it called Rikath because even the least worthy of its inhabitants are full of religious performances like a pomegranate or Jeremiah said Rikath is its proper name and why is it called Tiberius because it is situated in the very center of the land of Israel Rabbah said Rikath is its name and why is it called Tiberius because its aspect is good Zyra said Ketron is Sephoris and why is it called Sephoris because it is perched on the top of a mountain like a bird's zipper but is Ketron Sephoris now Ketron was in the territory of Zebulun as it is written Zebulun drove not out the inhabitants of Ketron nor the inhabitants of Nahalal now Zebulun complained of his portion as it says Zebulun was a people which shamed his soul to death why because Naphtali was on the high places of the field Zebulun complained to the Holy One blessed be he saying sovereign of the universe to my brethren thou hast given fields and vineyards and to me thou hast given hills and mountains to my Brethren, thou hast given lands unto me, thou hast given lakes and rivers. God replied, They will all require thee for the Hylazon, as it says, and the hidden treasures of the sand. And our Joseph learned hidden indicates the Hylazon treasures, indicates the tiny fish sand, indicates white glass. Zebulun and said, Sovereign of the universe, who will inform me? He replied, There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness. This shall be thy sign. Whoever takes of thee without payment will not prosper in his business. Now, if you assume that Ketron is Sephoris, why did Zebulun complain of his portion, seeing that Sephoris is an excellent spot? Nor can you say that it is not flowing with milk and honey. For Rush Lakish has said, I have myself seen the trail of milk and honey round Sephoris, and it is sixteen miles by sixteen miles. Nor can you say that even so, his is not as good as his brother, since Rabbi Barhanna said in the name of our Yohanan, I have myself seen the trail of milk and honey of it. Whole land of Israel and it extends altogether about as far as from Bikubi to the fort of Tulbank, twenty two parasangs in length and six parasangs in breadth, even so he preferred fields and vineyards. This is also indicated by the language of the text as it says Naphtali upon the high places of the field. This is a proof our said it is written Ekron shall be rooted up. This is Kisri, the daughter of Edom, which is situated among the sands and which was a thorn in the side of Israel in the days of the Greeks when the house of the Hasmonians grew powerful and conquered them. They called it the capture of the tower of Shur Arhose Behanan said what is meant by the text, and I will take away his blood out of his mouth and his detestable things from between his teeth, and he also shall be a remnant for our God, and I will take away his blood out of his mouth. This refers to their sacrificial shrines and his detestable things from between his teeth. This refers to their oracles, and he also Shall be
By the verse grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, draw not out his bit so that they exalt themselves. Selah Jacob said before the Holy One, Blessed be he, sovereign of the universe, grant not to Esau the wicked the desire of his heart, draw not out his bit Talmud. Mas Mejela be this refers to Jeremiah of Edom, for should they but go forth, they would destroy the whole world. Arhabah Behanna said there are three hundred crowned heads in Jeremiah of Edom and three hundred and sixty five chieftains. In Rome, and every day one set go forth to meet the other, and one of them is killed, and they have all the trouble of appointing a king again. Our Isaac also said, If a man says to you, I have labored and not found, do not believe him. If he says, I have not labored but still have found, do not believe him. If he says, I have labored and found, you may believe him. This is true in respect of words of Torah, but in respect of business, all depends on the assistance of heaven, and even for words of Torah, this is true only of penetrating to the meaning, but for remembering what one has learned, all depends on the assistance of heaven. Our Isaac also said, If you see a wicked man being favored by fortune, do not contend with him, as it says, Do not contend with evildoers, nor is this all, but he may even prosper in his undertakings, as it says, His ways prosper at all times, nor is this all, but he may even be declared right, as it says, Thy judgments are far above out of his sight, nor is this all, but he may even triumph. Over his enemies, as it says, as for all his adversaries, he puffeth at them. Is this so? Has not our Yohanan said in the name of our Simeon Biohe? It is permitted to contend with the wicked in this world, as it says, they that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Also, it has been taught our Dost Tai Bimatan says, it is permitted to contend with the wicked in this world, and if one should whisper to you, saying, as for the text, do not contend with evildoers, neither be thou envious against them that work unrighteousness. One whose conscience smites him speaks thus, and the meaning is, do not contend with the evildoer to be like evildoers, neither be envious of such as work unrighteousness. And so it says, also, let not thy heart envy sinners. There is no contradiction. The one piece of advice refers to one's own affairs, the other to religious matters, or if you like, I may say that both refer to one's own affairs, and still there is no contradiction. The one is. Addressed to a man who is holy righteous and the other to one who is not holy righteous as Arhuna said what is the meaning of the verse wherefore lookest thou when they deal treacherously and holdest that peace when the wicked swallow without the man that is more righteous than he, he can swallow up one that is more righteous than himself he cannot swallow up one that is completely righteous or if you like I can say that when fortune is smiling on him the case is different Ola said Greek Italy is the great city of Rome which covers an area of 300 parasangs by 300 it has 300 markets corresponding to the number of days of the solar year the smallest of them is that of the poultry sellers which is 16 mil by 16 the king dines every day in one of them everyone who resides in the city even if he was not born there receives a regular portion of food from the king's household and so does everyone who was born there even if he does not reside there there are 3,000 baths in it and 500 windows, the smoke from which goes outside the wall, one side of it is bounded by the sea, one side by hills and mountains, one side by a barrier of iron, and one side by pebbly ground and swamp. Mishnah, if the Megillah has been read in the first Adar and the year has subsequently been prolonged, it is read again in the second Adar. There is no difference between the first Adar and the second Adar, save only in the reading of the Megillah and the distribution of gifts to the poor Gemara. This last statement implies that in respect of the series of special portions, they are on the same footing which authority does the Mishnah follow. It would seem neither the first Tana nor our Eliezer, son of our Jose, nor our Simon B. Gamaliel in the following Barith, as it has been taught, if the Megillah has been read in the first Adar and the year has then been prolonged, and it is read in the second Adar, since all the precepts which are to be performed in the second Adar can be performed in the first except the reading of the Megillah. Our Eliezer son of our Jose says that it is not to be read again in the second Adar because all precepts that are to be performed in the second Adar may be performed in the first. Our Simon B. Gamaliel says in the name of our Jose that it is to be read again in the second because precepts which are to be performed in the second Adar may not be performed in the first. They all however agree in regard to morning and fasting. That they are forbidden on the fourteenth and fifteenth of both does not our Simon B. Gamaliel here repeat the first Tana. Our Papa replied they differ on the question of the series of special portions. The first Tana holding that these should in the first instance be read in the second Adar but if they have been read in the first this suffices but he also excludes from this ruling the reading of the Megillah holding that even though it has been read in the first Adar it must be read. Again in the second Aralizer son of Arhose on the other hand held that even the Megillah may in the first instance be read in the first Adar and our Simon B. Gamaliel held that even the series of special portions if they have been read in the first Adar must be read again in the second which authority then does our mission to follow if you say the first Tana there is a difficulty of gifts if you say Aralizer son of Arhose there is a difficulty of the reading of the Megillah also if you say our Simon B. Gamaliel there is a difficulty of the series of special portions in fact it is the first Tana and when he mentioned the reading of the Megillah we suppose the same to apply to the gifts of the poor since one depends on the other or if you like I can say that in fact it is our Simon B. Gamaliel and there is an omission in our mission and what it means is this there is no difference between the fourteenth of the first Adar and the fourteenth of the second Adar save in the Matter of reading the Megillah and gifts to the poor from which we infer that in regard to mourning and fasting they are on the same footing while in regard to the special portions no ruling is given our high Abin said in the name of our Yohanan the Halachat is as laid down by our Simon B. Gamaliel who gave it in the name of our Jose our Yohanan said both of them are Simon and our Eliezer son of our Jose based their opinions on the same text in every year our Eliezer son of Jose reasoned in every year just as in most years we think of Adar as the month which adjoins Shabbat so here we keep the precepts in the Adar which adjoins Shabbat our Simon B. Gamaliel again reasoned just as in most years we think of Adar as adjoining this and so here we keep the precepts in the Adar which adjoins this and now we understand our Eliezer son of our Jose taking the view he did because it is inherently probable it being a rule that we do not postpone the performance of religious precepts but what is the reason of our Simon B. Gamaliel our Tavi said the reason of our Simon B. Gamaliel is that more weight is to be attached to bringing one period of redemption close to another. Our Eliezer said the reason of our Simon B. Gamaliel is derived from this verse to confirm the second letter of Purim and it was necessary for the text to write Talmud, Mas Mejela the second and also to write in every year for if I had to base the rule on every year I could raise the difficulty stated above therefore it is written second and if I had been told only second I might say that the Megillah is properly to be read both in the first and in the second therefore it says in every year and what does our Eliezer son of our Jose make of the second he requires it for the statement enunciated by our Samuel B. Judah for our Samuel B. Judah said at first they Mordecai and Esther decreed the observance of Purim only in Susa but afterwards throughout the world our Samuel B. Judah said Esther sent to the wise men saying commemorate me for Future generations, they replied, You will incite the ill will of the nations against us. She sent back reply, I am already recorded in the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia, Rab and Arhanan and Aryohanan and Arhabal record the above statement in this form in the whole of the order mode. Wherever the set of rabbis is mentioned, Aryohanan is replaced by our Jonathan Esther sent to the wise men saying, Write an account of me for posterity. They sent back answer, Have I not written for thee? Three times, three times, and not four, and they refused until they found a verse written in the Torah. Write this a memorial in the book which they expounded as follows. Write this, namely, what is written here, and in Deuteronomy for a memorial, namely, what is written in the prophets in the book, namely, what is written in the Megillah. The difference between the first and second of these opinions is also found between two tanaim. Write this, what is written here for a memorial, namely, what is written. In Deuteronomy in a book namely what is written in the prophets so our Joshua our Eliezer of Modiyim says write this namely what is written here and in Deuteronomy for a memorial namely what is written in the prophets in a book namely what is written in the Megillah Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel the scroll of Esther does not make the hands unclean are we to infer from this that Samuel was of opinion that Esther was not composed under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit how can this be? Seeing that Samuel has said that Esther
says Esther was composed under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as it says and the thing became known to Mordecai or Jose B. Damascus said Esther was composed under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as it says but on the spoil they laid not their hands said Samuel had I been there I would have given a proof superior to all namely that it says they confirmed and took upon them which means they confirmed above what they took upon themselves below Rabbah said all the proofs can be CONFU'd. Except that of Samuel which cannot be CONFU'd thus against that of our Eliezer it may be objected that it is reasonable to suppose that Haman would think so because there was no one who was so high in the esteem of the king as he was and that when he spoke at length he was only expressing the thought concerning himself against the proof of our Akiva it may be objected that perhaps the fact is as stated by our Eliezer who said that these words show that to every man she appeared to belong to his own nation against our Meir it may be objected that perhaps the fact is as stated by our high B. Abba who said that Bigthan and Teresh were two men from Tarsus against the proof of our Jose B. Damascus it may be objected that perhaps they sent messengers against the proof of Samuel certainly no decisive objection can be brought said Robin this bears out the popular saying better is one grain of sharp pepper than a basket full of pumpkins or Joseph said it can be proved from here and these days of Purim shall not fail from among the Jews are Naman B. Isaac said from here nor the memorial of them perish from their seat and gifts to the poor are Joseph learned and sending portions one to another that means two portions for one man and gifts to the poor that means two gifts to two men are Judah sent to our Ashai the leg of a thirdborn calf and a barrel of wine he sent him backward saying Talmud, Mas Mejala you have fulfilled in our person O our teacher the words and sending portions. One to another Rabbah sent to Mari Bimar by Abay a sackful of dates and a cupful of roasted ears of corn said Abay to him Mari will now say if a countryman becomes a king he does not take his basket off his neck the other Mari sent him Rabbah back a sackful of ginger and a cupful of long stalked pepper said Abay now the master Rabbah will say I sent him sweet and he sends me bitter Abay said when I went out of the master's Rabbah's house I was already full but when I reached it other place they set before me sixty dishes of sixty different preparations and I had sixty pieces from them the last preparation was called pot roast and I liked it so much that I wanted to lick the dish after it said Abay this bears out the popular saying the poor man is hungry and does not know it or the other saying there is always room for sweet things Abay Bobin and Arhan and I Bobin used to exchange their meals with one another Rabbah said it is the duty of a man to mellow himself. With wine on Purim until he cannot tell the difference between curse be Haman and blessed be Mordecai Rabbah and Arzara joined together in the Purim feast they became mellow and Rabbah rose and cut Arzara's throat on the next day he prayed on his behalf and revived him next year he said will your honor come and we will have the Purim feast together he replied a miracle does not take place on every occasion Rabbah said if one eats his Purim feast on the night of the 14th he does not thereby fulfill his obligation what is the reason it is written days of feasting and gladness Arashi was sitting before our Kahana it grew late and still the rabbis did not arrive he said to him why have not the rabbis come perhaps they are busy with the Purim feast he said to him could they not have had it last night he replied is your honor not acquainted with the diction of Rabbah if one eats his Purim feast on the night of the 14th he does not thereby fulfill his obligation he said to him did Robert really say so he replied yes he then repeated it after him forty times until he had safely stored it in his mind Mishnah there is no difference between festivals and Sabbath save only in the matter of preparing food tomorrow we can infer from this that in the matter of preliminaries for preparing food they are on the same footing the Mishnah then does not agree with Arjuna as it has been taught there is no difference between festivals and Sabbath save in the matter of preparing food Arjuna however permits on the festivals the preliminaries for preparing food what is the reason of the first hand of the scripture says save that which every man must eat that only shall be prepared that and not its preliminaries Arjuna on the other hand stresses the word for you for you which means for all your requirements why then does not the other also admit the seeing that it is written for you this he says means for you and not for non-Jews for you and not for dogs and why does not the other adopt this view seeing that it is written that only he replies it is written that only and it is written for you we apply the one to preliminaries which can be attended to on the day before the festival and the other to preliminaries which cannot be attended to on the day before the festival mission there is no difference between Sabbath and the day of atonement save only that the deliberate violation of the one is punished by a human court and the deliberate violation of the other by Garth it is to be inferred from this that in respect of compensation they are on the same footing whose view does the mission follow that of Arnihunya Bihakana as it has been taught Arnihunya Bihakana used to put the day of atonement on the same footing as Sabbath in respect of compensation just as one who deliberately breaks Sabbath forfeits his life but is released from the obligation to make compensation so one who deliberately breaks the day of Atonement forfeits his life but is released from the obligation to make compensation we have learned elsewhere if any who have incurred the penalty of Kareth are flogged they become quit of their Kareth as it says then thy brother should be disinured in thine eyes once he has been flogged he is like thy brother so Arhan and I Begamaliel said Arjuhan and the colleagues of Arhan and I Begamaliel joined issue with him on this point Rabbah said they said in the school of Rab we have also learned this. There is no difference between the day of atonement and Sabbath save that he who breaks the one is punished by a human court while he who breaks the other is punished with Kareth now if Arhan and I's opinion is correct then both are punished by the human court our Naman replied whose view is this that of our Isaac who said that lashes are never inflicted on those who have incurred Kareth as it has been taught those who have incurred Kareth are included in the general statement why then is Kareth? Specially mentioned in the case of one who lies with his sister to show that she is punished with Kareth and not with lashes Arashi said you may even say that it is a view of the rabbis in the case of the one the breaker of Sabbath the essential punishment for his presumption is inflicted by the human court but in the case of the other the essential punishment for his presumption consists in being cut off Talmud, Mas Mejala and Mishnah there is no difference between one who is interdicted by vow to have no benefit from his neighbor and one who is interdicted by vow from his food save in the matter of setting foot on his property and of utensils which are not used for preparing food tomorrow it is to be inferred from this that in the matter of utensils which are used for preparing food they are on the same footing setting foot but people are not particular about this rabbis said whose view is this are who said that even a thing which is usually excused is Forbidden to one who vows to have no benefit mission there is no difference between vows and free will offerings save that vowed offerings have to be replaced but free will offerings need not be replaced tomorrow it is to be inferred from this that in respect of not delaying they are on the same footing we have learned in another place what is a vow where a man says I take upon me the obligation to bring a burnt offering what is a free will offering where a man says behold this is to be a burnt offering what then is the practical difference between vows and free will offerings if vowed animals die or are stolen or lost the one who offered is under obligation to replace them if free will offerings die or are stolen or lost he is not under obligation to replace them once is this rule derived as our rabbis have taught and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement upon him our Simeon says that which is upon him he is under obligation to replace how is it implied that this Substitute is upon him or Isaac B. of Dini replied since he has said I take upon me it is as if he had taken it upon his shoulder Mishnah there is no difference between one suffering from an issue who makes two observations and one who makes three save in the matter of bringing a sacrifice tomorrow from this it is to be inferred that in the matter of defiling a bed or a seat and counting seven days they are on the same footing whence is this rule derived as our rabbis have taught our says. The text specified two observations and designated the man as unclean and also specified three and designated him as unclean how do we explain this two bring uncleanness but do not entail a sacrifice three entail a sacrifice but cannot I say that two bring uncleanness but do not entail a sacrifice while three entail a sacrifice but no uncleanness to this you may answer that before he has three observations he must have two let me say then that two observations entail a sacrifice but not Uncleanness whereas three bring uncleanness also do not imagine such a thing since it has been taught and the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord from his issue this implies that some persons with an issue bring a sacrifice and some do not how is this if he has three observations he brings a sacrifice if only two he
Cannot this be deduced logically as follows if he defiles bed and seat shall he not all the more be required to count seven days Talmud? Mas Mejala be this argument can be co would by the case of the woman who is keeping day for day for such a one defile bed and seat but does not count seven days and thus do not be surprised that this one also although he defiles bed and seat should not be obliged to count seven days therefore it says from his issue and he shall number which implies that. After part of his issue he shall number this teach with regard to one with an issue who has had two observations that he is required to count seven days or Papa said to Abbe why do we use the one text from his issue to include one with an issue who has had two observations and the other text from his issue to exclude one with an issue who has had two observations he replied if you should assume that the former text is for the purpose of excluding then the text could simply omit the word end. Should you say we could then derive the rule that he is to count seven days by a logical deduction such a deduction could be conf'd by the case of the woman who counts day for day and should you say that this word is required to show that the text refers to one who is cleansed of his issue only and not of his issue and his leprosy in that case the text should say and when he that hath an issue is cleansed and no more why do I require from his issue this teaches that one with an issue. Who has two observations is required to count seven days Mishnah there is no difference between a leper who is under observation and one definitely declared such save in the matter of leaving the hair loose and rending the garments there is no difference between a leper who has been declared clean after being under observation and one who has been declared clean after having been definitely declared a leper save in the matter of shaving and offering the birds tomorrow from this it is to be. Inferred that in the matter of being sent outside the camp and uncleanness they are on the same footing whence is this rule derived as our Samuel B. Isaac taught before Arunath and the priest shall pronounce him clean it is a scab and he shall wash his clothes and be clean which implies that he shall already have been in a sense clean from the first not having been liable to renting the garments and loosening the hair said Rabbah to him if that is so then in regard to one with an issue of whom. It is written and he shall wash his garments and be clean how is it possible to say that he shall have been clean from the start what it means then is clean now so far as not to defile earthenware vessels by moving them so that even if he observes an issue again he does not defile them retrospectively so here the meaning is that the leper is clean now to the extent of not defiling retrospectively by his entrance the fact is said Rabbah that we learn it from here and the leper in whom the plague. Is that means one whose leprosy is due to the state of his body excluding this one whose leprosy is due to day said Abbe to him if that is so then when it says all the days wherein the plague is in him he shall be unclean are we to say that one whose leprosy is due to his state of body is required to be sent out of the camp but one whose leprosy is not due to his state of body is not to be sent out of the camp and should you reply that that is so how can this be seen that it states. There is no difference between a leper under observation and one definitely declared such save in the matter or loosening the hair and rending the garments from which it may be inferred that in the matter of being sent out of the camp and defiling by entrance they are on the same footing the text might have said simply the days and it says all the days to bring a leper under observation within the rule of sending out of the camp if that is the case what is the reason that he is not. Required to shave and offer birds, which is not the case, as it states, there is no difference between a leper under observation and one definitely declared such save in the matter of shaving and offering birds. Abbe replied, Scripture says, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and behold, the plague of leprosy is healed in the leper. This means one whose leprosy is such because it requires healing and excludes one whose leprosy is such in virtue not of requiring healing but of days of isolation. Mishnah, there is no difference between books of the scripture and Tefillin and Mazuza, save that the books may be written in any language, whereas Tefillin and Mazuza may be written only in Assyrian or Simeon. Bigamaliel says that books of the scripture also were permitted by the sages to be written only in Greek. Tomorrow from this we infer that for requiring the sheets to be stitched with sinews and for defiling the hands, both are on the same footing, books may be written in. Any language the following seems to conflict with this a scriptural scroll containing a Hebrew text written in Aramaic or an Aramaic text written in Hebrew or either in Hebraic script does not defile the hands it does not do so until it is written in Assyrian script upon a scroll and an ink robber replied there is no contradiction Talmud. Mas Mejala the one statement that of the Mishnah speaks of books written in our script the other of books written in their script said Abihu. Him how have you explained the other statement that of the Beritha is referring to their script if so why should it say a Hebrew text written in Aramaic or an Aramaic text written in Hebrew the same would apply even to a Hebrew text which is written in Hebrew or an Aramaic text which is written in Aramaic since it goes on to say till it is written in Assyrian on a scroll and ink no what you must say is there is no contradiction the one statement in the Mishnah represents the view of it. Rabbis the other that of Arsimian B. Gamaliel but if it is the view of Arsimian B. Gamaliel what about Greek no what you must say is there is no contradiction the one statement in the Mishnah refers to scrolls the other to Tefillin and Mezuzas what is the reason why Tefillin and Mezuzas must be written in Assyrian because in reference to them it is written and they shall be which implies they shall be as they originally were what cases are there of Aramaic which can be written in Hebrew. I grant you we find in the Torah Yegar Sahadatha but here in the case of Tefillin and Mezuzoth what Aramaic is there no what you must say is there is no contradiction the one statement in the Beritha refers to the Megillah the other to the other books of the scripture what is the reason in the case of the Megillah because it is written in regard to it according to their writing and according to their language what case of Aramaic being written in Hebrew is possible here our Papa said. And the king's pithgam shall be published. Arnam and B. Isaac said, and all the wives shall give yeker to their husbands. Arashi said that statement in the Beritha was made in reference to other books of the scripture, and it follows the view of our Judah as it has been taught. Tefillin and Mezuzas are to be written only in Assyrian, but our rabbis allowed them to be written in Greek also. But is it not written? And they shall be. I must say, therefore, scrolls of the scripture may be written in any language, and our rabbis permitted them to be written in Greek. They permitted this would imply that the first ten forbade it. What I must say, therefore, is our rabbis permitted them to be written only in Greek, and it goes on to state our Judah said when our teachers permitted Greek, they permitted it only for a scroll of the Torah. This was on account of the incident related in connection with King Ptolemy, as it has been taught. It is related of King Ptolemy that he brought together seventy-two. Elders and placed them in seventy-two separate rooms without telling them why he had brought them together and he went into each one of them and said to him translate for me the Torah of Moses your master God then prompted each one of them and they all conceived the same idea and wrote for him God created in the beginning I shall make man an image and likeness and he finished on the sixth day and rested on the seventh day male and female he created him but they did not write created them. Come let me descend and confound their tongues and Sarah laughed among her relatives for in their anger they slew an ox and in their wrath they digged up a stall and Moses took his wife and his children and made them ride on a carrier of men and the abode of the children of Israel which they stayed in Egypt and in other lands was four hundred years and he sent the elect of the children of Israel and against the elect of the children of Israel he put not forth his hand Talmud, Mos have taken not one valuable of theirs which the Lord thy God distributed to give light to all the peoples and he went and served other gods which I commanded should not be served they also wrote for him the beast with small legs and they did not write the hair because the name of Ptolemy's wife was hair lest he should say the Jews have jibed at me and put the name of my wife in the Torah Arsimian B. Gamaliel says that books of the scripture also are permitted to be written only in Greek are about said in the name of our Yohanan the Halacha follows Arsimian B. Gamaliel our Yohanan further said what is the reason of Arsimian B. Gamaliel scripture says God enlarged Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem this means that the words of Japheth shall be in the tents of Shem but why not say the words of Gomer and Magog are high Abba replied the real reason is because it is written let God enlarge Japheth implying let the chief beauty Yafioth of Japheth be in the tents of Shemishna there is no difference between a priest anointed with the oil of anointment and one who only wears the additional garments save in the matter of the bullock which is offered for the unwitting breaking of any of the commandments there is no difference between a regular high priest and one who has passed through the office save in respect of the bullock of the day of atonement and the tenth of the Eva Gemara between the priest anointed etc
Happened with our Jose Bulam from Sephoris that a disqualification occurred to the high priest and they appointed him in his place and the case eventually came before the sages and they said the first returns to his service the second is qualified to act neither as a high priest nor as an ordinary priest as a high priest so as not to create enmity as an ordinary priest because we can raise to a higher grade of holiness but we never put down to a lower are we then to say that the first clause of the mission follows the sages and the second armadier said Arhista yes the first clause follows the sages and the second armadier are Joseph said the whole gives the opinion of rabbi who combined the views of differing Tanay mission there is no difference between the great high place and a small one save in the matter of the paschal lamb offering this is the general principle any animal which is the object of a vow or a free will offering may be brought on a small high place any animal which is not the object of a vow or a free will offering may not be brought on a small high place Gemara the Paschal Lamb and nothing else we should say things like the Paschal Lamb whose view is this are Simeon's as it has been taught the congregation also did not offer on the large high place anything save Paschal Lambs and obligatory sacrifices for which there is a fixed time but obligatory sacrifices for which there is no fixed time were not offered either on the one or the other Mishnah there is no difference between Shiloh and Jerusalem save that in Shiloh sacrifices of lesser sanctity and second tithe could be eaten anywhere within sight of the town whereas in Jerusalem they had to be consumed within the walls in both places the most holy sacrifices were eaten within the curtains after the sanctification of Shiloh Talmud Mos Mejilah the high places could again become permitted but after the sanctification of Jerusalem there can be no such permission Gemara Isaac said I have Heard that sacrifices may be offered in the Temple of Onias at the present day he was of opinion that the Temple of Onias is not an idolatrous shrine and that the first holiness of Jerusalem was conferred on it for the time being but not for all time as it is written for year not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance rest year means Shiloh and inheritance means Jerusalem and inheritance is put on the same footing as rest to show that just as after the destruction of the rest the high places were again permitted so after the destruction of the inheritance they will be permitted they said to him do you really say so he replied no said Rabbah by God he did say it and I learned it from him why then did he retract on account of the difficulty raised by Armari for Armari just the following in confutation after the sanctification of Shiloh high places can again be permitted but after the sanctification of Jerusalem there can be no such permission we have also learned Further after that the Israelites occupied Jerusalem the high places were forbidden and they were never permitted again and it was the inheritance there is a difference of ten name on this point as we have learned our Elizer said I have heard that when they were building the Hekal in the second temple they made curtains for the Hekal and for the courtyard the difference being that in the Hekal they built the walls outside the curtains and in the courtyard they built the walls within. The curtains and our Joshua said I have heard that sacrifices may be brought even though there is no temple that the most holy foods may be eaten even though there are no curtains and that foods of lesser sanctity and second tithe may be eaten even though there is no wall because the first holiness was conferred on Jerusalem both for the time being and for all time we infer from this that our Elizer was of opinion that it was not at first sanctified for all time said Rabbanu to our Ashi how can we? Draw this inference perhaps all agree that the first holiness was conferred upon it for the time being and for all time and one master reported what he had heard and the other what he had heard should you ask in that case why were curtains needed according to our Eliza we can answer that they were merely for privacy rather it is the following Tanaim who differ on this point as it has been taught our Ishmael son of our Jose said why did the sages enumerate these because when the exiles returned they found these cities still walled and sanctified them the others however lost their privilege when the land lost its sanctity this shows that he was of opinion that the first holiness was conferred for the time being and not for the future and a contradiction was pointed out with the following our Ishmael son of our Jose said were these all do we not find it said sixty cities all the region of Argob and it is written all these were fortified cities with high walls why then did the sages Enumerate these because when the exiles returned they found these still walled and sanctified them they sanctified them Talmud, Mas Mejil now say you do we not say that they did not require to be sanctified what you should say is they found these and enumerated them and not only in these alone but in everyone in regard to which you shall find a tradition from your ancestors that it was walled from the days of Joshua son of none all these precepts are to be observed because the first holiness was conferred for the time being and for all future time there is thus a contradiction between two statements of our Ishmael two Tanaim report our Ishmael son of our Jose differently or if you like I can say that the latter dictum emanates from our Eliezer B. Jose as it has been taught our Eliezer B. Jose says that has no wall even though it has not now but it had in previous times and it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus or Levi or some say our Jonathan said the following remark is a tradition. Handed down to us from the men of the great assembly wherever in the scripture we find the term W.A.I. and it was and it came to pass it indicates the approach of trouble thus and it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus there was Haman and it came to pass in the days when the judges judged there was a famine and it came to pass when men began to multiply then God saw that the wickedness of man was great and it came to pass as they journeyed east then they said come let us build a city. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel then they made war and it came to pass when Joshua was in Jericho then his angel sword was drawn in his hand and the Lord was W.A.I. with Joshua then the children of Israel committed a trespass and there was a certain man of Ramah Thames then for he loved Hannah but the Lord had shut up her womb and it came to pass when Samuel was old and his sons walked not in his ways and David had W.A.I. great success in all his ways then. And Saul had David, and it came to pass when the king dwelt in his house, then nevertheless thou shalt not build the house, but is it not written? And it came to pass on the eighth day, and it has been taught on that day there was joy before the Holy One. Blessed be he as on the day when heaven and earth were created, for it is written, and it came to pass WAI on the eighth day, and it is written in the other place, and there was WAI one day Nadab and Abba who died on that day, but is it not written? And it came to pass in the four hundred and eightieth year, and it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, and it is also written, and there there was evening, and there was morning one day, and there is the second day, and the third, and there are many other cases. Are as she replied, the fact is that WAI sometimes has the signification, and sometimes not, but the expression, and it came to pass in the days of always indicated trouble five times, we find the expression, and it came to pass in the days. Of this and it came to pass in the days when the judges judged and it came to pass in the days of Amraphel and it came to pass in the days of Ahaz and it came to pass in the days of Jehoiakim our Levi further said the following is a tradition that we have from our ancestors that Amos and Amazai were brothers what does this tell us it confirms what was said by our Samuel bin Amani in the name of our Jonathan every bride who is modest in the house of her father-in-law is rewarded by having kings and prophets among her descendants how do we prove this from Tamar as it is written and Judah saw her and thought her to be a harlot for she had covered her face now because she had covered her face did he think her to be a harlot rather what it means is that because she had covered her face in the house of her father-in-law and he did not know her she was rewarded by having among her descendants kings and prophets kings from David and prophets as our Levi said it is a tradition handed down to us. From our ancestors that Amos and Amazai were brothers and it is written the vision of Isaiah son of Amos our Levi further said we have a tradition from our ancestors that the ark took up no room it has been taught to the same effect the ark which Moses made had rounded an empty space of ten cubits on every side now it is written and in front of the sanctuary was twenty cubits in length and twenty cubits in breadth and it is also written and the wing of the one cherub was ten cubits and it wing of the other cherub was ten cubits where then was the ark itself we must therefore conclude that it stood by a miracle without occupying any room our Jonathan prefaced his discourse on this section with the text and I will rise against them set the Lord and cut off from Babylon name and remnant and offshoot and offspring set the Lord which he expounded as follows name means script remnant his language offshoot his kingdom and offspring is Vashti our Samuel bin Amani introduced his Discourse on this section with the following text instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle instead of the thorn instead of the wicked Haman who put himself up as an object of worship as it is written and upon all thorns
The downfall of the wicked and Aryohan and further said what is the meaning of the verse and one came not near the other all the night the ministering angels wanted to chant their hymns but the holy one blessed be he said the work of my hands is being drowned in the sea and shall you chant hymns or Eliezer replied he himself does not rejoice but he makes others rejoice this is indicated also by the text which writes Yasis and not Yasis which proves what we said our Abba Kahana introduced his discourse on this section with the following text for to the man that is good in his sight he giveth wisdom and knowledge and joy this he said is the righteous Mordecai but to the sinner he giveth the task to gather and to heap up this is Haman that he may leave it to him that is good in the sight of God this refers to Mordecai and Esther as it is written and Esther said Mordecai over the house of Haman Rabbi often introduced his discourse on this section with the following text and I will Set my throne in Elam and will destroy from hence king and princes king indicates Vashti and princes indicates Haman and his ten sons are Dimi B. Isaac introduced his discourse on this section with the following text Talmud, Mas Mejela for we are bondmen yet hath God not forsaken us in our bondage but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia when was this in the time of Haman our Hanabi Papa introduced his discourse on this section with the following text thou hast caused men to ride over our heads we went through fire and through water through fire in the days of the wicked Nebuchadnezzar and through water in the days of Pharaoh but thou didst bring us out into abundance in the days of Haman our Yohanan introduced his discourse on this section with the following text he hath remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our Lord when did all the ends of the earth see the salvation of our Lord in the days of Mordecai and Esther Reshlakish introduced his discourse on this section with the following text as a roaring lion and a ravenous bear so is a wicked ruler over a poor people a roaring lion this is the wicked Nebuchadnezzar of whom it is written a lion is gone up from his thicket a ravenous bear this is Ahasuerus of whom it is written and behold another beast a second like to a bear and our Joseph learned these are the Persians who eat and drink like bears and are coated with flesh like bears and are hairy like bears and can never keep still like bears a wicked ruler this is Haman over a poor people this is Israel who are poor in the observance of precepts our Eliezer introduced his discourse on this with the following text by slothfulness he that lays beams becomes poor you and through idleness of the hands the house leaked through the slothfulness in which Israel indulged not busying themselves with the Torah of the enemy of the Holy One blessed be he Became poor the meaning of Mac is poor as it says and if he is too Mac for thy valuation and Mikora means only the Holy One blessed be he as it says who layest the beams hami carry of thy upper chambers in the waters are and be Isaac introduced his discourse on this section with the following text a song of ascents if it had not been for the Lord who was for us let Israel now say if it had not been the Lord who was for us when a man rose up against us a man and not a king Rabbah introduced his discourse on this section from here when the righteous are increased the people rejoice but when the wicked beareth rule the people sigh when the righteous are increased the people rejoice this is illustrated by Mordecai and Esther as it is written and the city of Shushan shouted and was glad but when the wicked beareth rule the people sigh this is illustrated by Haman as it is written but the city of Shushan was perplexed our Mahana made his introduction from this verse for what great Nation is there that hath God so nigh to the Marashi made it from this verse or hath God a say, etc. And it came to pass WAI in the days of Ahasuerus, etc. Rab said the word WAI is equivalent to way and high woe and mourning with reference to this it is written and there ye shall sell yourselves unto your enemies for bondmen and for bondwomen and no man shall buy you Samuel quoted I did not reject them neither did I abhor them to destroy them utterly I did not reject them in the days of the Greeks neither did I abhor them in the days of Nebuchadnezzar to destroy them utterly in the days of Haman and to break my covenant with them in the days of the Persians for I am the Lord their God in the days of Gog and Magog and Avery it was taught I have not rejected them in the days of the Chaldeans when El raised up for them Daniel Hanani and Missile and Ezra neither did I abhor them in the days of the Greeks when I raised up for them Simeon the righteous and Hasmonei and his sons and Mattathias the high priest to destroy them utterly in the days of Haman when I raised up for them Mordecai and Esther to break my covenant with them in the days of the Persians when I raised up for them the members of the house of Rabbi and the sages of the various generations for I am the Lord their God in the time to come when no nation or people will be able to subject them or Levi introduced his discourse from this verse but if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of it land before you are high introduced his discourse from this verse and it shall come to pass that as I thought to do unto them so will I do unto you I swear as Rab said he was as his name implies the brother of the head and the counterpart of the head the brother of the head the brother of Nebuchadnezzar the wicked who was called head as it is written thou art the head of gold the counterpart of the head the one slew the other sought to slay the one laid waste the other sought to lay waste as it is written and in the reign of Ahasuerus in the beginning of his reign wrote the an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem Samuel said that as his name indicates the face of Israel was blackened in his days like the sides of the pot Aryohanan said that his name indicates that everyone who thought of him said alas for my head Arhanan said it indicates that all became poor in his days as it says and the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute that who is Ahasuerus this means that he persisted in his wickedness from beginning to end similarly this is who he saw the same in his wickedness from beginning to end similarly these are that who David and Abiram the same in their wickedness from the beginning to the end similarly the same who King Ahaz the same in his wickedness from the beginning to the end similarly Abram the same who is Abraham the same in his righteousness from the beginning to the end similarly these are that who Aaron and Moses the same in their righteousness from the beginning to the end similarly and David he was who the smallest he persisted in his humility from the beginning to the end just as in his youth he humbled himself before anyone who was his superior in Torah so in his kingship he humbled himself before anyone who was his superior in wisdom who reigned Rab said this indicates that he raised himself to the throne some interpret this to his credit and some to his discredit some interpret it to his credit holding that there was no other man equally fitted for the throne others interpret it to his discredit holding that he was not fitted for the throne but that he was very wealthy and by means of lavish distribution of money rose to the throne from Hadu to Kush Rab and Samuel gave different interpretations of this one said that Hadu is at one end of the world and Kush at the other and the other said that Hadu and Kush join one another and that the meaning is that as he ruled over Hadu and Kush so he ruled from one end of the world to the other a similar difference occurs with reference to the words for he had dominion over all the region on the side of the river from Tifsa even unto Gaza here again Rab and Samuel interpreted differently one said that Tifsa is at one end of the world and Gaza at the other and the other said that Tifsa and Gaza are near one another and that what is meant is that as he Solomon ruled over Tifsa and over Gaza so he ruled over the whole world seven and twenty and a hundred provinces are his Dasa at first he ruled over seven then over twenty more and finally over a hundred more but if you interpret thus what of the verse and the years of the life of Amram were seven and thirty and a hundred years what lesson will you derive from that there is a difference here because the whole text is superfluous see now it is written from Hadu to Kush why then do I require seven and twenty and a hundred provinces you must conclude that it is for a special lesson our rabbis taught three potentates ruled over the whole globe namely Ahab, Ahasuerus, and Nebuchadnezzar Ahab as it is written as the Lord thy God live but there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee etc. Now if he was not king over them how could he make them take an oath Nebuchadnezzar as it is written and it shall come to pass that the nation and the kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon Ahasuerus as we have pointed out above Talmud, Mos Mejil of Enimonic SHSDK but are there no more is there not Solomon he did not retain his kingdom till his death this is a sufficient answer for the one who holds that he was first a king and then a subject but for the one who holds that he was first a king then a subject and then a king again what can we reply Solomon was in a different category because he ruled over the denizens of it. Upper world as well as of the lower as it says and Solomon sat upon the throne of the Lord but was there not Sennacherib as it is written who are they among all the gods of these countries that have delivered their country
years as a master has said they went into exile in the seventh year and they went into exile in the eighth year they went into exile in the eighteenth year and they went into exile in the nineteenth year that is to say in the seventh year after the subjection of Jehoiakim they underwent the exile of Geniah this being the eighth year of Nebuchadnezzar in the eighteenth year from the subjection of Jehoiakim they underwent the exile of Zedekiah this being the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar as a master has said in the first year of his reign he Nebuchadnezzar overthrew Nineveh in the second year he conquered Jehoiakim and it is written and it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim king of Judah in the twelfth month in the seven and twentieth day of the month that Ebal Merdash king of Babylon in the year of his reign lifted up the head of Jehoiakim king of Judah and brought him forth out of prison eight and thirty seven make forty five of Nebuchadnezzar the twenty three of Ebal Merdash we know from tradition these with two of his own make seventy he Belshazzar said to himself now of a surety they will not be redeemed so he brought out the vessels of the temple and used them hence it was that Daniel said to him but thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee it is further written in that night Belshazzar the Chaldean king was slain and it is Written and Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about threescore and two years old he I swear said he calculated and made a mistake I will calculate and make no mistake is it written seventy years for the kingdom of Babylon it is written seventy years for Babylon what is meant by Babylon the exile of Babylon how many years is this reckoning less than the other eight so in place of them he inserted one of Belshazzar five of Darius and Cyrus and two of his own which made seventy. When he saw that seventy had been completed and they were not redeemed he brought out the vessels of the temple and used them and the Satan came and danced among them and slavashti but he reckoned correctly he also made a mistake since he ought to have reckoned from the destruction of Jerusalem granted all this how many years are short eleven how long did he reign fourteen consequently in the fourteenth year of his reign he ought to have rebuilt the temple why then is it written then? Cease the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. Rabba replied the years were not full once Talmud. Mos Mejula it has been taught to the same effect there was yet another year left to Babylon and Darius arose and completed it. Rabba said Daniel also made a mistake in this calculation as it is written in the first year of his reign. I Daniel meditated in the books etc. From his use of the words I meditated we can infer that he had first made a mistake all the same there is a contradiction between the text is there not it is written in one when they are accomplished for Babylon and it is written in the other for the desolations of Jerusalem. Rabba replied the first term was for visitation Pekita only and this was fulfilled as it is written thus saith Cyrus king of Persia all the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord the God of the heavens given to me and he hath charged packet me to build him a house in Jerusalem our son of our Hista, gave the following. Exposition What is the meaning of the verse thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus whose right hand I have holden now with Cyrus the Messiah rather what it means is the Holy One blessed be he said to the Messiah I have a complaint on thy behalf against Cyrus I said he shall build my house and gather my exiles and he merely said whosoever there is among you of all his people let him go up the army of Persia and Media the nobles and elsewhere it is written the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia how is this robber replied to the Medes and Persians made a stipulation with one another saying if we supply the kings you will supply the governors and if you supply the kings we will supply the governors when he showed the riches of his glorious T.I.F. Eric kingdom our Jose Bihan said this shows that he arrayed himself in priestly robes it is written here the riches of his glorious T.I.F. Eric kingdom and it is written elsewhere in connection with the priestly garments. For splendor and for glory, T.I.F. Earth, and when these days were fulfilled, Rab and Samuel interpreted this differently. One said he was a clever king, and the other said that he was a foolish king. The one who held he was a clever king said that he did well in entertaining his distant subjects first because he could win over the inhabitants of his own city any time he wished. The one who held that he was foolish says that he ought to have entertained the inhabitants of his metropolis first so that if the others rebelled against him, these would have supported him. Our Simon Beale was asked by his disciples why were the enemies of Israel in that generation deserving of extermination. He said to them, Do you answer? They said, Because they partook of the feast of that wicked one. He said to them, If so, those in Susa should have been killed, not those in other parts. They then said, Give your answer. He said to them, It was because they bowed down to the image. They said to him, Did God then show them? Favoritism he replied they only pretended to worship and he also only pretended to exterminate them and so it is written for he afflicted not from his heart in the court of the garden of the king's palace Rab and Samuel gave different interpretations of this one said that those who had the entree of the court were entertained in the court and those who had the entree of the garden in the garden and those who had the entree of the palace in the palace the other said he first put them in the court and it did not hold them and he took them into the garden and it did not hold them and finally he had to take them into the palace and he found room for them in the very that it was taught he took them into the court and opened two doors for them one into the garden and one into the palace white her fine cotton carpets and blue what is her rap said finally work Samuel said he spread for them carpets of white silk carpets are Jose Bihan and I said this means cushions of velvet upon Silver rods and pillars of marble, the couches were of gold and silver. It has been taught our Judah set silver for some and gold for others according to their degree. Said Arnimai to him, if that were so, there would have been jealousy at the banquet. No, the couches themselves were of silver and their feet of gold, green, baha, and white marble. RC said this means stones that flash back at their owner, and so it says as the stones of the crown glittering over his land and shell, DR and onyx. Marble Saharath Rab said this means rose, Dari upon rose. Samuel says there is a precious stone in the seaports called Dari. He put it in the midst of the guests and it lit up the place as at midday Sahara in the school of our Ishmael. It was taught it means that he gave remission of taxes to all who dealt in merchandise. Sirah, and they gave them drinking vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse, shown one from another. It should have said in different vessels, Rabba said of Beth. Cole went forth and said to them, Your predecessors met their end on account of vessels, and yet you use them again. Shonam and royal wine in abundance. Rab said, This teaches that each one was given to drink wine older than himself, and the drinking was according to law. What is meant by according to law? Arhanan said, In the name of our Medir, according to the law of the Torah, just as according to the law of the Torah, the quantity of food exceeds the drink. So in the feast of that wicked one, there was more food than drink. None did compel. Our Eliezer said, This teaches that each one was given to drink from the wine of his own country, that they should do according to every man's ish pleasure. Rabba said, This means that they should do according to the will of Mordecai and Haman. Mordecai is called man as it is written, a Jewish man, and Haman as it is written, a man, an adversary, and an enemy. Also, Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house. It should have said the women's. House Rabbah said both of the Mahaswaras and Vashti had an immoral purpose. This bears out the popular saying he with large pumpkins and his wife Talmud, Mos Mejalabi with small pumpkins on the seventh day where the king's heart was merry with wine was then his heart not merry with wine until then Rab said the seventh day was Sabbath when Israel eat and drink they begin with discourse on the Torah and with words of thanksgiving to God but the nations of the world the idolaters when they eat and drink only begin with words of frivolity and so at the feast of that wicked one some said the Median women are the most beautiful and others said the Persian women are the most beautiful said Ahaswaras to them the vessel that I use is neither Median nor Persian but Chaldean would you like to see her they said yes but it must be naked for man receives measure for measure this remark teaches you that the wicked Vashti used to take the daughters of Israel and strip them naked and make then work on Sabbath so it is written after these things when the wrath of the king Ahasuerus abetted he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decided against her as she had done so it was decreed against her and the queen Vashti refused let us see she was immodest as the master said above that both of them had an immoral purpose why then would she not come our Jose Bihanna said this teaches that leprosy broke out on her in the Beretha it was taught that Gabriel came and fixed a tail on her and the king was very angry why was he so enraged Rabba said she sent him back answer thou son of my father's steward my father drank wine in the presence of a thousand and did not get drunk and that man has become senseless with his wine straightway his wrath burnt within him and the king said to
Ever stir mercy the meal offerings before the Memlukan did they ever prepare Hakinu a table before the and Memlukan said Atanatot Memlukan is the same as Haman and why was he called Memlukan because he was destined Memlukan for punishment Arkahana said from here we see that an ordinary man always pushes himself in front that every man should bear rule in his house Rabbah said had it not been for these first letters there would have been left no shred or remnant of the enemies of Israel. People said what does he mean by sending us word that every man should bear rule in his own house of course he should even a weaver in his own house must be commander and let the king appoint officers Rabbi said what is the meaning of the verse even prudent man dealeth with forethought but a fool unfolded folly every prudent man dealeth with forethought this applies to David of whom it is written wherefore his servants said unto him let there be sought for my lord the king a young virgin every one who had a daughter brought her but a fool unfolded folly this applies to Ahasuerus of whom it is written and let the king appoint officers whoever had a daughter hid her there was a certain Jew in Shushan the castle etc of Benjamin what is the point of this verse if it is to give the pedigree of Mordecai it should trace it right back to Benjamin why then were only these specified attended taught all of them are designations of Mordecai the son of Jair means the son who enlightened he I are the eyes of Israel by his prayer the son of Shimei means the son to whose prayer God here can Shammah the son of Kish indicates that he knocked Kish at the gates of mercy and they were open to him he is called the Jew which implies that he came from the tribe of Judah and he is called the Benjamin which implies that he came from Benjamin how is this Arnaman said he was a man of distinguished character Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Joshua believe by his father was from Benjamin and his mother from Judah the rabbis however said the tribes competed with one another for him the tribe of Judah said I am responsible for the birth of Mordecai because David did not kill Shimei the son of Gerah and the tribe of Benjamin said he is actually descended from me Rabbah said the community of Israel explained the two designations in the opposite sense see what a Judean did to me and how a Benjamin repaid me what a Judean did to me Talmud, Mas Mejlov is that David did not kill Shimei from whom was descended Mordecai who provoked Haman and how Benjamin repaid me because that Saul did not slay Agag from whom was descended Haman who oppressed Israel Are Yohanan said he did indeed come from Benjamin why then was he called a Jew because he repudiated idolatry for anyone who repudiates idolatry is called a Jew as it is written there are certain Jews etc are Simon because he once introduced an exposition of the book of Chronicles as follows all thy words are one and we know how to find their inner meaning it is written and his wife the Jewess were Jared the father of Gedder and Heber the father of Sako and Jekathiel the father of Zeno and these are the sons of Bithia the daughter of Pharaoh who Mir took why was she the daughter of Pharaoh called the Jewess because she repudiated idolatry as it is written and the daughter of Pharaoh went down to bathe in the river and Aryohan and commenting on this said that she went down to cleanse herself from the idols of her father's house were but she only brought him Moses up this tells us that if anyone brings up an orphan boy or girl in his house the scripture accounts it as if he had begotten him Jared this is Moses why was he called Jared because Mada came down Jared for Israel in his days Gedder he was so called because he fenced in Gedder the breaches of Israel Heber because he joined Heber Israel to their father in heaven Sako because he was like a sheltering booth Sukafor. Israel Jehathiel because Israel trusted in God Kai Eliel in his days Zeno because he made Israel abandon his neither in quitties father of father of father of he was a father in Torah a father in wisdom a father in prophecy these are the sons of Bithya who Mir took was Mir his name was not Caleb his name the Holy One blessed be he said let Caleb who rebelled Marat against the plan of the spies come and take the daughter of Pharaoh who rebelled against the idols of her fathers house who had been carried away from Jerusalem Rabbah said we understand this to mean that he went into exile of his own accord and he brought up Hadassah she is called Hadassah and she is called Esther it has been taught Esther was her proper name why then was she called Hadassah after the designation of the righteous who are called myrtles for so it says and he stood among the myrtle trees our Judah says Hadassah was her name why then was she called Esther because she concealed Master Rathi. Facts about herself as it says Esther did not make known her people or her kindred are Nehemiah says Hadassah was her name why then was she called Esther all peoples called her so after Esther Ben Eze said Esther was neither too tall nor too short but of medium size like a myrtle our Joshua B. Korha said Esther was sallow but endowed with great charm for she had neither father nor mother and it continues and when her father and mother died why these last words are Aha said when her mother became pregnant with her her father died when she was born her mother died and when her father and mother died Mordecai took her for his own daughter a taught in the name of Armeyur read not for a daughter Elibeth but for a house Elibeth similarly it says but the poor man had nothing save one little ulam which he had brought up and reared and it grew up together with him and with his children it did eat of his own morsel and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter because it lay in his bosom was it like a daughter to him rather what it means is like a wife so here it means a wife and the seven maidens who were meet to be given to her Rabbah said they were seven so that she could count the days of the week by them and he changed her and her maidens Rab said this means that he gave her Jewish food to eat Samuel however said it means that he gave her chins of pork while Aryohan and said that he gave her pulse and so it says so the steward took away their food and gave them pulse six months with the oil of myrrh what is the oil of myrrh our high Abba said Sachet Arhuna said oil from olives not a through grown it has been taught our Judah says that and Pikanun is oil of olives not a through grown why is it used for smearing because it removes hair and makes the skin soft in the evening she went and on the morrow she returned from the discreditable account of that wicked man we can learn something to his credit namely that he did not perform his marital office by day and Esther obtained favor our Eliezer said this informs us that every man took her for a member of his own people so Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month which is the month debate the month when body warms up body and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins Rab said if he wanted to find in her the taste of a virgin he found it if the taste of a married woman he found it then the king made a great feast he made a feast for her and she did not tell him who she was he remitted taxes and she did not tell him he sent gifts and she still did not tell him and when the virgins were gathered together the second time etc he went and took counsel of Mordecai who said the way to rouse a woman is to make her jealous and even so she did not tell our Eliezer said what is the meaning of the verse Talmud Mas Mejilabi, he withdraw not his eyes from it. Righteous in reward for the modesty displayed by Rachel she was granted to number among her descendants Saul and in reward for the modesty displayed by Saul he was granted to number among his descendants Esther what was the modesty displayed by Rachel as it is written and Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother now was he her father's brother was he not the son of her father's sister what it means is this he said to her will you marry me she replied yes but my father is a trickster and he will outweed you he replied I am his brother in trickery she said to him is it permitted to the righteous to indulge in trickery he replied yes with the pure thou dost show thyself pure and with the crooked thou dost show thyself subtle he said to her what is his trickery she replied I have a sister older than I am and he will not let me marry before her so he gave her certain tokens when night came she said to herself now my sister will be put to shame so she handed over the tokens to her so it is written and it came to pass in the morning that behold it was Leah are we to infer from this that up to now she was not Leah what it means is that on account of the tokens which Rachel gave to Leah he did not know till then therefore she was rewarded by having Saul among her descendants what modesty did Saul display as it is written but concerning the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spoke he told him not he was therefore rewarded by having Esther among his descendants are Eliezer further said when the Holy One blessed be he assigns greatness to a man he assigns it to his sons and his sons sons for all generations as it says with kings on the throne he satate them forever and they are exalted if however he becomes arrogant God humiliates him as it says and if they be bound in fetters etc for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai or Jeremiah said this means that she used to show the blood of her impurity to the sages like as when she was brought up with him. Rabbi Bilima said in the name of Rab this means that she used to rise from the lap of Ahasuerus and bathe and sit in the lap
is the iniquity of Ephraim uncovered not so however with the other nations he smites them first and then creates for them healing as it says the Lord will smite Egypt smiting and healing but it seemed contemptible in his eyes to lay hands on Mordecai alone at first he aimed at Mordecai alone and at the people of Mordecai and who are these the rabbis and finally at all the Jews they cast per that is Allah hated taught when Allah fell on the month of Adar he rejoiced greatly saying that Allah has fallen for me on the month in which Moses died he did not know however that Moses died on the seventh of Adar and was born on the sixth of Adar there is one people Rabbah said there never was a traducer so skillful as Haman he said to Ahasuerus come let us destroy them he replied I am afraid of their God lest he do to me as he did to my predecessors he replied they are negligent of the precepts he said there are rabbis among them he replied there are one people should you say that I will Make a void in your kingdom. I reply, they are scattered abroad among the people. Should you say there is some prophet in them? I reply, they are dispersed, never to like an isolated about parada that does not bear fruit. Should you say that they occupy one province? I reply, they are in all the provinces of thy kingdom. Their laws are diverse from those of every other people. They do not eat of our food, nor do they marry our women, nor give us theirs in marriage, neither keep they the king's laws. Since they evade taxes the whole year by their loitering and sauntering, therefore it profiteth not the king to suffer them because they eat and drink and despise the throne. For if a fly falls into the cup of one of them, he throws it out and drinks the wine. But if my lord the king were to touch his cup, he would dash it on the ground and not drink from it. If it please the king, let it be written that they be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver. Rush like said it was well known. Beforehand to him at whose word the world came into being that Haman would one day pay shekels for the destruction of Israel therefore he anticipated his shekels with those of Israel and so we have learned on the first of it our proclamation is made regarding the shekelim and the mixed seeds and the king said to Haman the silver is given to thee and the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to the Arab said Talmud, Mas Mejalei to what can we compare Ahasuerus and Haman at this point. To two men one of whom had a mount in the middle of his field and the other a ditch in the middle of his field the owner of the ditch said I wish I could buy that mount and the owner of the mount said I wish I could buy that ditch one day they met and the owner of the ditch said sell me your mount whereupon the other replied take it for nothing and I shall be only too glad and the king removed his ring Arab Abikahana said this removal of the ring was more efficacious than forty-eight prophets. And seven prophetesses who prophesied to Israel for all these were not able to turn Israel to better courses and the removal of the ring to turn them to better courses. Our rabbis taught forty-eight prophets and seven prophetesses prophesied to Israel and they neither took away from nor added ought to what is written in the Torah save only the reading of the Megillah. How did they derive it from the Torah? Our high Abin said in the name of our Joshua B. Korhai for being delivered from slavery. To freedom we chant a hymn of praise should we not do so all the more for being delivered from death to life if that is the reason we should say hell also we do not do so because hell is not said for a miracle which occurred outside of the land of Israel how then do we come to say it for the exodus from Egypt which was a miracle which occurred outside the land of Israel as it has been taught until they entered the land of Israel all lands were counted as proper for chanting a hymn of Praise for miracles done in them after they had entered the land other countries were not counted as proper for chanting a hymn of praise for miracles done in them Arnaman said the reading of the Megillah is equivalent to hell Rabbah said there is a good reason in that case of the exodus from Egypt because it says in the hell praise ye o servants of the Lord who are no longer servants of Pharaoh but can we say in this case praise ye servants of the Lord and not servants of Ahasuerus we are still servants of Ahasuerus whether on the view of Rabbah or on the view of Arnaman there is a difficulty in what has been taught above that after they had entered the land other countries were not counted as proper for chanting a hymn of praise for miracles done in them when the people went into exile the other countries became proper as at first were there no more prophets than these 48 is it not written how there was a man from Ramathames often which we Interpret one of two hundred prophets Safim who prophesied to Israel. There were actually very many as it has been taught. Many prophets arose for Israel. Double the number of the Israelites who came out of Egypt. Only the prophecy which contained a lesson for future generations was written down. And that which did not contain such a lesson was not written. Our Samuel B. Namani said this Ramathames Safim means a man who came from two heights which faced one another. Arhanin said it means a man who came from ancestors of the most exalted position. And who were they? The sons of Korah as it says. And the sons of Korah did not die. Atana taught in the name of our teacher. A special place was assigned to them in Gehinnom. And they stood on it. Seven prophetesses who were these Sarah, Miriam, Deborah, Hannah, Abigail, Hulda, and Esther. Sarah as it is written the father of Milcah and the father of Yitzchak. And our Isaac said on this Yitzchak is Sarah. And why was she called Yitzchak? Because she discerned. Say by means of the Holy Spirit as it is said in all that Sarah saith unto thee hearken to her voice another explanation is because all gazed sucking at her beauty Miriam as it is written and Miriam the prophet is the sister of Aaron was she only the sister of Aaron and not the sister of Moses Arnaman said in the name of Rab she was so called because she prophesied when she was the sister of Aaron only and said my mother is destined to bear a son who will save Israel when he was born the whole house was filled with light and her father arose and kissed her on the head saying my daughter thy prophecy has been fulfilled but when they threw him into the river her father arose and tapped her on the head saying daughter where is thy prophecy so it is written and his sister stood afar off to know to know that is what would be with the latter part of her prophecy Deborah as it is written now Deborah a prophet is the wife of Labi what is meant by a woman of flames she was so called because she used to make wicks for the sanctuary and she sat under a palm tree why just a palm tree are Simeon via Bishalom said to avoid privacy another explanation is just as a palm tree has only one heart so Israel in that generation had only one heart devoted to their father in heaven had as it is written and had a prayed and said my heart exalteth in the Lord my horn is exalted in the Lord she said my horn is exalted and not my cruise is exalted thus implying that the royalty of the hour of David and Solomon who were anointed from a horn would be prolonged but the royalty of the house of Saul and Jehu who were anointed with a cruise would not be prolonged there is none holy as the Lord for there is none beside the Arjuna be mean she said red not Bilhika beside thee but read level Athika to survive before the nature of the Holy One blessed be he is not like that of flesh and blood it is the nature of flesh and blood to be survived by its works but God survives his works, neither is there any rocks who are like our God, there is no artist stay here like our God, a man draws a figure on a wall but is unable to endow it with breath and spirit, inward parts and intestines, but the Holy One blessed be he fashions a form within a form and endows it with breath and spirit, inward parts and intestines, Abigail as it is written, and it was so as she rode on her ass and came down by the covered of the mountain, by the covered set of the mountain, it should say from the mountain, Rabbi Samuel said it means that she came with reference to blood that came from the hidden parts therein, she brought some blood and showed it to him, he said to her, his blood to be shown by night, she replied, our capital case is tried at night, he said to her, Talmud, Mas Mejla Bihinabal is a rebel against the king and no trial is necessary for him, she replied, Saul is still alive and your fame is not yet spread abroad in the world, and he said to her, blessed be thy. Discretion and blessed be thou that hast kept me this day from blood guiltiness. The word damn and blood guiltiness is plural to indicate two kinds of blood. The passage teaches that she bared her thigh and he went three parasangs by the light of it. He said, Listen to me, she replied, Let not this be a stumbling block to thee. The word this implies that something else would be and what was that the incident of Bathsheba and so it was eventually the soul of thy Lord shall be bound up in the bundle of life. When she left him, she said to him, And when the Lord shall have done good to my Lord, then remember thy handmaid Arnaman said this bears out the popular saying while a woman talks, she spins some of this the saying the goose stoops as it goes along, but its eyes pure far hold as it is written, so he'll the priest and he come and etc. But if Jeremiah was there, how could she prophesy? It was said in the school of Rab in the name of Rab Hulda was a near relative of Jeremiah and he did. Not object to her doing so, but how could Josiah himself pass over Jeremiah and send to her the members of the school of Arshila replied, Because women are tender h
The hornet it is written and she sent and called Barak instead of going to him of the weasel it is written say to the man instead of say to the king Arnaman said Hulda was a descendant of Joshua it is written here in connection with Hulda the son of Parhas and it is written in another place in connection with Joshua in Timnath Haris Ari and Asa besided the following in objection to Arnaman eight prophets who were also priests were descended from Rahab the harlot namely Nerea Barak Syria. Masiah Jeremiah Hilkiah Hanamel and Shalomar Judah says Hulda the prophetess was also one of the descendants of Rahab the harlot we know this because it is written here the son of Tikva and it is written elsewhere in connection with Rahab the line Tikvath of Scarlet Thread he replied Ian Asaba or according to another report Black Bull the truth can be found by combining my statement and yours we must suppose that she became a proselyte and Joshua married her but had Joshua any children is it not written on his son Joshua his son he had no sons but he had daughters Talmud Mas Mejla we admit that some of those eight mentioned above are expressly described as prophets but how do we know that their fathers were prophets from the dictum of Olaf Orla said wherever a man's name is given along with that of his father as the author of a prophecy we know that he was a prophet son of a prophet where his own name is given but not that of his father we know that he was a prophet but not the son of a prophet where his name and the name of his town are specified we know that he came from that town where his name is given but not that of his town we know that he was from Jerusalem in a very it was stated if nothing is known about the character of a man or of his ancestors and the scripture mentions any one of them in connection with the praiseworthy action as for instance the word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah son of Cusi son of Gedaliah we may know that he was a righteous man, son of a righteous man, and wherever the scripture mentions any one of them in connection with a reprehensible action, as for instance, and it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael the son of Elishab came, we may know that he was a wicked man, son of a wicked man. Arnaman said Malachi is the same as Mordecai. Why was he called Malachi? Because he was next to the king. The following recited in objection to this Barak, the son of Miriah and Syriah, son of Masiah and Daniel and Mordecai, Bilshan, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi all prophesied in the second year of Darius. This is a refutation. It has been taught. Our Joshua B. Korha said Malachi is the same as Ezra, and the sages say that Malachi was his proper name. Arnaman said there is good ground for accepting the view that Malachi was the same as Ezra, for it is written in the prophecy of Malachi. Judah hath dealt treacherously, and abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah. Hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God, and who was it that put away the strange women Ezra as it is written, and Shechania the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have broken faith with our God, and have married foreign women. The rabbis taught there have been four women of surpassing beauty in the world, Sarah, Rahab, Abigail, and Esther, according to the one who says that Esther was Salo Vashti should be inserted in place of Esther. Our rabbis taught Rahab inspired lust by her name, Jael by her voice, Abigail by her memory, Michael, daughter of Saul by her appearance, our Isaac said, Whoever says Rahab, Rahab at once has an issue, said Arnaman to him, I say Rahab, Rahab, and nothing happens to me. He replied, I was speaking of one who knows her and is intimate with her now. When Mordecai knew all that was done, etc., what was his cry? Rab said, He said, Haman has raised himself above Ahas, where Samuel said it. Upper king has prevailed over the lower king and the queen was exceedingly pained. W.A. Tithel what is the meaning of W.A. Tithel Rab said it means that she became menstruous. Our Jeremiah said that her bowels were loosened and Esther called Hadish. Rab said Hadish is the same as Daniel. Why was he called Hadish? Because he was degraded. Hadish from his position. Samuel said because all affairs of state were decided. Netakim by his voice to know what this was and why this was. Our Isaac said. She sent to him saying perhaps Israel have transgressed the five books of the Torah in which is written on this side and on this they were written and they told Mordecai Esther's words but Hadish did not go to him on this occasion. This shows us that a recalcitrant answer need not be taken back by the messenger. Go gather together all the Jews which is not according to the custom. Our Abba said it will not be. She said according to the custom of every other day till now I have associated with. Ahas wears under compulsion, but now I will do so of my own will, and if I perish, I perish as I am lost to my father's house, so I shall be lost to thee. And Mordecai passed W. A. Barab said this indicates that he made the first day of Passover pass as a fast day. Samuel said it indicates that he crossed a stream on that day. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on royalty. Surely it should say royal apparel. R. Eliezer said in the name of our Hannah, this tells us that the holy spirit clothed her. It is written here, and she put on it. It is written elsewhere, and a spirit clothed Amasa R. Eliezer be Hannah also said, Let not the blessing of an ordinary man be lightly esteemed in thine eyes, for two men great in their generation received from ordinary men blessings which were fulfilled in them. They were David and Daniel. David was blessed by Arana, as it is written, and Arana said unto the king, The Lord thy God, except thee, Daniel was blessed by Darius, as it is written, thy God whom thou servest continually he will deliver thee. Our Eliezer further said in the name of our Hannah, let not the curse of an ordinary man be lightly esteemed in thine eyes, because Abimelech cursed Sarah, saying, Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes, and this was fulfilled in her seat, as it says, and it came to pass that when Isaac was old, his eyes were dim. Our Eliezer further said in the name of our Hannah, to come and observe that the way of the Holy One, blessed be he, is not like the way of flesh and blood. The way of flesh and blood is that a man places a pot on the fire and then pours water into it, but God first puts in the water and then fixes the pot to fulfill what is written at the sound of his giving a multitude of waters in the heavens. Our Eliezer further said in the name of our Hannah, whoever reports a saying in the name of its originator brings deliverance to the world, as it says, and Esther told the king in the name of Mordecai. Our Eliezer further said in the name of our Hannah. When a righteous man dies, he dies only for his own generation. It is with him as with a man who loses a pearl. Wherever it is, it remains a pearl and is lost only to its owner. Yet all this availeth me nothing. Our Eliezer said in the name of our Hannah, because he saw Mordecai sitting in the king's gate. Was this any reason why he should say all this availeth me nothing? The explanation is in the dictum of our Histah. For our Histah said the one came to the court as a counselor, and the other Talmud, Mas. Mejlabi as an envoy. Our Papa said they also called him the slave that was sold for loaves of bread. Yet all this availeth me not. This tells us that all the treasures of that wretch were engraved on his heart. And when he saw Mordecai sitting in the king's gate, he said, Yet all this availeth me not. Our Eliezer further said in the name of our Hannah, God will in the time to come be a crown on the head of every righteous man, as it is said in that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory. Etc. What is meant by a crown of glory? Zb and a diadem of of beauty for them that do his will. Zbino and who await Mazap in his glory shall he be so to all not so since it says unto the residue of Lashay are his people that is to whoever makes of himself a mere residue Shireim and for a spirit of judgment this indicates one who brings his inclination to trial to him that sitteth in judgment this indicates one who gives a true verdict on true evidence and for strength this indicates one who subdues his evil passions that turn back the battle this indicates those who thrust and parry in the war of the Torah at the gate these are the disciples of the wise who are early and late in synagogues and houses of study said the attribute of justice before the Holy One blessed be he why this difference between these and the others the Holy One blessed be he said to him Israel busy themselves with the Torah the other nations do not busy themselves with the Torah he replied. To him, but these also reel through wine and stagger through strong drink. They totter in judgment. Paku Belilia and Paku contains a reference to Gehinnom, as it says that this shall be no stumbling block. Pukah to the end. Belilia contains a reference to the judges, as it says, and he shall pay as the judges determined by Philip. And stood in the inner court of the king's house. Our Levi said, when she reached the chamber of the idols, the divine presence left her. She said, My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Dost thou perchance punish the inadvertent offense like the presumptuous one, or one done under compulsion like one done willingly, or is it because I called him dog? As it says, Deliver my soul from the sword, mine only one from the power of the
should neglect to pray for mercy our Jose said so that he should always be at hand for her our Simeon beaming aside said she said perhaps the omnipresent will notice and do a miracle for us our Joshua B. Korha said she said I will encourage him so that he may be killed both he and I Rabban Gamaliel said she said Ahasuerus ah, is a changeable king said our Gamaliel we still require the Modian as it has been taught our Eliza of Modiam says she made the king jealous of him and she made the princes Jealous of him, Rabbi said, she said, Pride goeth before destruction. Abay and Rabbi gave the same reason, saying, She said, With their poison, I will prepare their feast. Rabbi Abba came across Elijah and said to him, Which of these reasons prompted Esther to act as she did? He replied, All the reasons given by all the Tanaim and all the Amram and Haman recounted unto them the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children. How many are indicated by the multitude of his children? Rab said, Thirty ten died, ten were hung, and ten were reduced to beggary. The rabbis, however, said, Those who were reduced to beggary numbered seventy, as it says, They that were full Sebaim have hired themselves out for bread. Read not Sebaim, but Shivam seventy. Rami B. Abba said, In all, they were two hundred and eight, as it says, And the multitude we of his sons, but we in Gematria is two hundred and fourteen. Arnam and B. Isaac said, The word is written defectively on that night, the sleep of. The king was disturbed. Artan, who said the sleep of the king of the universe was disturbed. The rabbis, however, say those above were disturbed and those below were disturbed. Rabbi said it means literally the sleep of King Ahasuerus. A thought occurred to him. What is the meaning of Esther inviting Haman? Perhaps they are conspiring against me to kill me. He thought again. If that is so, is there no man who is my friend and who would tell me? Then he thought again. Perhaps there is some man who has done me a good turn and I have not rewarded him. And therefore, men refrain from informing me straightway. He commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read. This form of expression indicates that they were read of themselves and it was found being written. It should say a writing that was found as shows Talmud. Mas Mejla that Shamshai kept on erasing and Gabriel kept on writing. Rc said Arshila, a man of Kvartemar, drew a lesson from the saying of writing. On earth, which is for the benefit of Israel, cannot be erased. How much less writing in heaven there is nothing done for him. Rabbi said they answered him thus not because they loved Mordecai, but because they hated him and he had prepared for him. Atana stated this means he had prepared for himself and do even so to Mordecai, etc. Haman said to him, Who is Mordecai? He said to him, The Jew. He said, There are many Mordecais among the Jews. He replied, The one who sits in the king's gate said, Haman do. Him for him the tribute of one village or one river is sufficient. Said Ahasuerus, Give him that to let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse. He went and found Mordecai with the rabbi sitting before him while he showed them the rules of the handful. When Mordecai saw him approaching and leading the horse, he became frightened and said to the rabbis, This villain is coming to kill me. Get out of his way so that you should not get into trouble with. And Mordecai thereupon drew his robe round him and stood up to pray him and came up and sat down before them and waited till Mordecai had finished his prayer. He said to him, What have you been discussing? He replied, When the temple stood, if a man brought a meal offering, he used to offer a handful of fine flour and make atonement therewith. Said Haman to them, Your handful of fine flour has come and displaced my ten thousand talents of silver. Said Mordecai to him, Wretch, if a slave acquires property, whose is the slave and whose is the property? Haman then said to him, Arise and put on this apparel and ride on this horse, for so the king desires you to do. He replied, I cannot do so until I have gone into the bath and trimmed my hair, for it would not be good matters to use the king's apparel in the state. Now Esther had sent and closed all the baths and all the barber's shops, so Haman himself took him into the bath and washed him and then went and brought scissors from his house and trimmed his. Here while he was doing so he sighed and groaned said Mordecai to him why do you sigh he replied the man who was esteemed by the king above all his nobles is now made a bath attendant and a barber said Mordecai to him wretch and were you not once a barbering farkarzim for so Atana stated Haman was a barbering farkarzim twenty two years after he had trimmed his hair he put the garments on him and said to him mount and ride he replied I am not able as I am weak from the days of fasting so Haman stooped down and he mounted on his back when he was up he kicked him he said to him is it not written in your books rejoice not when thine enemy faileth he replied that refers to an Israelite but in regard to you folk it is written and thou shalt tread upon their high places and proclaim before him this shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor as he was leading him through the street where Haman lived his daughter who was standing on the roof saw him she thought. That the man on the horse was her father and the man walking before him was Mordecai, so she took a chamber pot and emptied it on the head of her father. He looked up at her, and when she saw that it was her father, she threw herself from the roof to the ground and killed herself. Hence it is written, and Mordecai returned to the king's gate. Arshis hate said this indicates that he returned to his sackcloth and fasting, but Haman hastened to his house mourning and having his head covered mourning for his daughter, and with his head covered on account of what had happened to him. And Haman recounted unto Zerish his wife and all his friends, etc. They are first called his friends, and then they are called his wise men. Are Yohanan said, Whoever says a wise thing, even if he is a non Jew, is called wise. If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, they said to him, If he comes from the other tribes, you can prevail over him, but if he is from the tribe of Judah or of Benjamin, Ephraim or Manasseh, you will not. Prevail over him, Judah, as it is written, thy hand shall be on the neck of thine enemies, the others, because it is written of them before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy might, but falling thou shalt fall, our Judah be I drew a lesson from this verse, saying, Why are two fallings mentioned here? Haman's friend said to him, This people is likened to the dust, and it is likened to the stars. When they go down, they go down to the dust, and when they rise, they rise to the stars. Came the kings. Chamberlains and hastened W. A. Yevhilu to bring Haman the use of this word. W. A. Yevhilu tells us that they brought him all in confusion. Behala, for we are sold, I and my people, etc. For the adversary cares not that the king is endemagged. She said to him, This adversary cares not for the damage of the king. He was angry with Vashti and killed her, and he is angry with me and wants to kill me. Then said the king, Ahasuerus, and he said to Esther, the queen, why said, and again said, Arabad replied he. First spoke to her through an intermediary when she told him that she came from the house of Saul. Forthwith he said to Esther the queen and Esther said an adversary and an enemy even this wicked Haman our Eliezer said this informs us that she was pointing to Ahasuerus and an angel came and pushed her hand so as to point to Haman and the king rose in his right hand the king returned out of the palace garden his returning is put on the same footing as his arising just as the arising was in wrath so the returning was in wrath for he went and found ministering angels in the form of men who were uprooting trees from the garden he said to them what are you doing they replied Haman has ordered us he came into the house and there Haman was falling upon the couch falling it should say had fallen our Eliezer said this informs us that an angel came and made him fall on it Ahasuerus then exclaimed trouble inside trouble outside then said the king will he even force the queen before me in the house then said Harbanah, etc. Our Eliezer said Harbanah also was a wicked man and implicated in that plot when he saw that his plan was not succeeding he at once fled and so it is written and he cast upon him and did not pity from his hand he surely fleed then the king's wrath was assuaged why are there two assuagings here one of the wrath of the king of the universe and the other of Ahasuerus others say one of the wrath on account of Esther and the other on account of Vashti to all of them he gave to each man changes of raiment but to Benjamin he gave five changes of raiment is it possible that that righteous man should fall into the very mistake from which he himself had suffered Talmud Mas Mejla for Rabbi Mahasha said in the name of Arhami Bigiria who said it in the name of Rab through two cells weight of fine silk which Jacob gave to Joseph over what he gave to his brothers of all was set rolling and our ancestors eventually went down to Egypt our Benjamin B. Jaffe said he Gave him a hint that a descendant would issue from him who would go forth before a king in five royal garments as it says and Mordecai went forth from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue etc. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck. How many necks had Benjamin? Our Eliezer said he wept for the two temples which were destined to be in the territory of Benjamin
It says, I rejoice at thy word, honor means of phylacteries, and so it says, and all the peoples of the earth shall see that the name of the Lord is called upon thee, and they shall be afraid of thee, and it has been taught. Our Eliezer the Great says that this refers to the phylactery of the head, and Parshante, the ten sons of Haman are added from Joppa, said the ten sons of Haman, and the word ten which follows should be said in one breath. What is the reason because their souls all departed? Together are Yohanan said the Bab of Weizatha must be lengthened like a boat pole of the river Labrath. What is the reason because they were all strung on one pole? Our Sheila, a man of Kvartemar, drew a lesson from the saying, All the songs in scripture are written in the form of a half brick over a whole brick and a whole brick over a half brick, with the exception of this one and the list of the kings of Canaan, which are written in the form of a half brick over a half brick and a whole brick. Over a whole brick, what is the reason so that they should never rise again from their downfall? And the king said to the queen in Shus and the castle, The Jews have slain the mode of expression informs us that an angel came and slapped him on his mouth. But when she came before the king, he said, Along with the letter, he said, It should be she said, Our Yohanan said, She said, Let there be said by word of mouth what is written in the letter, words of peace and truth are tantum said, or according to some are. I see this shows that the Megillah requires to be written on ruled lines like the true essence of the Torah and the ordinance of Esther confirmed only the ordinance of Esther and not the words of the fastings are Yohanan said we must read thus the words of the fastings and their cry and the ordinance of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim for Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the majority of his brethren of the majority of his brethren. But not of all his brethren this informs us that some members of the Sanhedrin separated from him are Joseph said the study of the Torah is superior to the saving of life for at first Mordecai was reckoned next after four but afterwards next after five at first it is written who came with zero Babel namely Shu Nehemiah Siri Relay Mordecai Bilshin and subsequently it is written who came with zero Babel Shu Nehemiah Azari Remy and Nahamani Mordecai Bilshin Rab or some say our Samuel B. Martha said the study of the Torah is superior to the building of the temple for as long as Barak be was alive Ezra would not leave him to go up to the land of Israel Rabbi said in the name of our Isaac be Samuel be Martha the study of the Torah is superior to the honoring of father and mother for for the fourteen years that Jacob spent in the house of Eber he was not punished since a master has said Talmud, Mas Mejela why are the years of Ishmael mentioned so as to reckon by them it. Years of Jacob as it is written and these are the years of the life of Ishmael a hundred and thirty and seven years how much older was Ishmael than Isaac fourteen years as it is written and Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram and it is also written and Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him and it is written and Isaac was threescore years old when she bore them how old then was Ishmael when Jacob was born seventy four how many years? were left of his life sixty-three and it has been taught Jacob our father at the time when he was blessed by his father was sixty-three years old it was just at that time that Ishmael died as it is written now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob so Esau went unto Ishmael and took Malath the daughter of Ishmael Abraham son the sister of Nebaioth now once it has been said Ishmael's daughter do I not know that she was the sister of Nebaioth this tells us then that Ishmael finds her and then died and Nebaioth her brother gave her in marriage sixty-three and fourteen till Joseph was born make seventy-seven and it is written and Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh this makes a hundred and seven add seven years of plenty and two of famine and we have a hundred and sixteen and it is written and Pharaoh said unto Jacob how many are the days of the years of thy life and Jacob said unto Pharaoh the days of the years of my sojournings are a hundred and thirty Years, but we have just seen that they were only 116. We must conclude, therefore, that he spent 14 years in the house of Eber as it has been taught after Jacob our father had left for Aram Naharim. Two years Eber died, he then went forth from where he was and came to Aram Naharim. From this it follows that when he stood by the well, he was 77 years old. And how do we know that he was not punished for these 14 years as it has been taught? We find that Joseph was away from his father 22 years, just as Jacob our father was absent from his father. But Jacob's absence was 36 years. It must be then that the 14 years which he was in the house of Eber are not reckoned. But when all is said and done, the time he spent in the house of Laban was only 20 years. The fact is that he was also punished because he spent two years on the way as it has been taught. He left Aram Naharim and came to Suk and spent there 18 months as it says and Jacob turned to Suk and built him a house and made booths for his cattle and in Bethel he spent six months and brought their sacrifices C-H-A-P-T-E-R-I-I -I mission if one reads the Megillah backwards he has not performed his obligation if he reads it by heart if he reads it in a translation Targum in any language he has not performed his obligation it may however be read to those who do not understand Hebrew in a language other than Hebrew if one who does not understand Hebrew hears it read in Hebrew he has performed his obligation if one reads it with breaks or while half asleep he has performed his obligation if he was copying it correcting it or expounding it then if in doing so he put his mind also to the reading of it he has performed his obligation but otherwise not if the copy from which he reads is written with Sam with Sikra with Kumis or with Kankantam or Anyar or Diptera he has not performed his obligation it must be written in Hebrew on parchment. And in ink tomorrow whence is this rule not to read backward derived Rabbah said the text says according to the writing thereof and according to the appointed time thereof just as the appointed time cannot be backward so the reading from the writing must not be backward but does the text speak here of reading it speaks of keeping as it is written that they would keep these two days the truth is that we derive the rule from here as it is written and that these days should be remembered and kept remembering is here put on the same footing as keeping just as keeping cannot be in the wrong order so remembering also attend stated the same rule applies to Hallel to the recital of the Shema and to the Amid of prayer whence do we derive the rule as regards Hallel Rabbah said because it is written from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof the Lord's name is to be praised our Joseph said from here this is the day which the Lord hath made our we said let the name of it Lord be blessed our nom and be Isaac or you may also say our Ahabi Jacob said it is from here from this time forth and forever to the recital of the Shema as it has been taught the Shema must be recited as it is written so Rabbi the sages however say it may be recited in any language what is Rabbi's reason scripture says Talmud, Mas Mejela and these words shall be which implies they shall be kept as they are and what is the reason of the Rabbis because scripture says here which implies in any language which you understand how then can Rabbi hold otherwise seeing that it is written here he requires that word for the injunction let thine ear hear what thou utterest with thy mouth the Rabbis however concurred with the authority who said that if one recites the Shema without making it audible he has performed his obligation but the Rabbis too how can they hold as they do seeing that it is written and they shall be they require this for the injunction that it should not be Recited backwards whence does Rabbi derive the rule that it should not be recited backwards from the use of the expression the words where words would have been sufficient the Rabbis however do not accept this distinction between the words and words may we say that Rabbi was of opinion that the whole of the Torah has been ordained to be recited in any language for should you assume that it has been ordained to be recited only in the holy tongue why should the words and they shall be be inserted in reference to the Shema these were necessary for it might have occurred to me to understand here in the same sense as the Rabbis therefore the all-merciful wrote and they shall be may we then say that the Rabbis were of opinion that the whole of the Torah was ordained to be recited only in the holy tongue since should you assume that it was ordained to be recited in any language I might ask why should here be inserted in reference to the Shema this word is necessary for it might occur to me to understand and they shall be in the same sense as Rabbi therefore the all-merciful wrote here to the Amid of prayer whence is this derived as it has been taught Simeon the Pakulai formulated 18 blessings in the presence of Rabban Gamaliel in the proper order in Jabna our Yohanan said others reported was stated in a very 120 elders among whom were many prophets through of 18 blessings in a fixed order our Rabbis taught whence do we derive that the blessing of the patriarchs should be said because it says ascribe unto the Lord O ye sons of might and whence that we say the blessing of mighty deeds because it says ascribe unto the Lord glory and strength and whence that
In the eighth blessing, what was their reason for placing the prayer for the blessing of the years? Ninth, our Alexandria said this was directed against those who raised the market price of foodstuffs, as it is written, Break thou the arm of the wicked. And when David said this, he said it in the ninth psalm, What was their reason for mentioning the gathering of the exiles after the blessing of the years? Because it is written, But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to thy people Israel, for they are at hand to come. And when the exiles are assembled, judgment will be visited on the wicked, as it says, And I will turn my hand upon thee and purge away thy dross as with lie. And it is written further, And I will restore thy judges as at the first. And when judgment is visited on the wicked, transgressors cease, and presumptuous sinners are included with them, as it is written, But the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed, and when the transgressors have disappeared, the horn of the righteous is exalted, as it is written, All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be lifted up, and proselytes of righteousness are included with the righteous, as it says, Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man, and the text goes on, and if a stranger sojourn with thee, and where is the horn of the righteous exalted in Jerusalem, as it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper that love thee, and when Jerusalem is built, David will come, as it says, Talmud, Mos Mejilah, afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and when David comes, prayer will come, as it says, Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, and when prayer has come, the temple service will come, as it says, Their burnt offerings and their Sacrifices shall be acceptable upon my altar, and when the service comes, thanksgiving will come, as it says, Whoso offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving, Hanurath me, what was their reason for inserting the priestly benediction after thanksgiving? Because it is written, and Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people, and he came down from offering the sin offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offerings. But cannot I say that he did this before the service? Do not imagine such a thing for it. Is written, and he came down from offering, is it written to offer, it is written from offering, why not then say it? the priestly benediction after the blessing of the temple service? Do not imagine such a thing, since it is written, Whoso offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving, why base yourself upon this verse, why not upon the other? It is reasonable to regard service and thanksgiving as one, what was their reason for having give peace after the priestly benediction? Because it is written so. They the priests shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and then I shall bless them, and the blessing of the Holy One blessed be his peace, as it says, The Lord shall bless his people with peace, seeing now that a hundred and twenty elders among whom were many prophets drew up the prayers in the proper order. Why did Simeon the Pakulai formulate them? They were forgotten, and he formulated them afresh beyond this. It is forbidden to declare the praise of the Holy One blessed be he for our Eliezer said, What is the meaning of the verse who can express the mighty acts of the Lord or make all his praise to be heard? For whom is it fitting to express the mighty acts of the Lord for one who can make all his praise to be heard? Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohan, and one who descants upon the praises of the Holy One blessed be he to excess is uprooted from the world, as it says, Shall it be told to him that I should speak should a man try to say, Surely he would be swallowed up our Judah, a man of Pargibre, or as some say of Pargibre, gave the following homily what is meant by the verse for the silence is praise, the best medicine of all is silence. When Ardimi came, he said in the West, they say a word is worth a cell of silence, two cells. If one reads it by heart, he has not performed his obligation. Whence this rule, Rabbah said, we explain the expression Zechariah in one passage from its use, in another it is written here, and these days shall be Niskarim remembered. And it is written elsewhere, write this Elisikaran for a memorial in the book, just as there it was to be in a book, so here it must be in a book. But how do we know that this Niskarim implies uttering? Perhaps it means mere reading with the eyes. Do not imagine such a thing since it has been taught. Remember Zechariah, am I to say this means only with the mind when the text says, Thou shalt not forget the injunction against mental forgetfulness is already given. What then am I to make of remember this? Must mean by utterance if one reads it in a translation he has not performed his obligation. How are we to understand this? Are we to suppose that it is written in Hebrew and he reads it in a translation? This is the same as reading by heart. It is required for the case where it is written in a translation and he reads it in a translation. It may, however, be read to those who do not speak Hebrew in a language other than Hebrew, but you have just said if one reads it in any other language he has not performed his obligation. Rab and Samuel both answered that what is referred to here is the Greek vernacular. How are we to understand this? Shall we say that it is written in Hebrew and he reads it in Greek? This is the same as saying by heart. Araha said in the name of our Eliezer, what is referred to is where it is written in the Greek vernacular. Araha also said in the name of our Eliezer, how do we know that the Holy One blessed be he called Jacob El God because it says and the God of Israel. Called him Jacob El, for should you suppose that what the text means is that Jacob called the altar El, and it should be written, and Jacob called it, but as it is not written, so we must translate he called Jacob El, and who called him so the God of Israel. An objection was brought against the dictum of Rab and Samuel from the following if one reads it in Coptic and Hebraic and Elamine and Median and Greek, he has not performed his obligation. This statement means only in the same sense as it. Following if one reads it in Coptic to the Copts in Hebrew to the Hebrews in Elamine to the Elamines in Greek to the Greeks, he has performed his obligation. If that is the case, why do Rab and Samuel explain the mission to refer to the Greek vernacular? Let them make it refer to any vernacular. The fact is that the mission agrees with the Beretha and the statement of Rab and Samuel was meant to be a general one. Thus Rab and Samuel both say that the Greek vernacular is good for all peoples, but it is stated he may read in Greek for the Greeks, for the Greeks that is he may, but for others not. The Rab and Samuel concurred with Rab and Simeon B. Gamaliel, as we have learned. Rab and Simeon B. Gamaliel says scrolls of the Scripture also were allowed to be written only in Greek. Let them then say the Halachas as stated by Rab and Simeon B. Gamaliel. Had they said the Halachas as stated by Rab and Simeon B. Gamaliel, I should have understood them to mean that this is the case with other books of the Scriptures, but not with the Megillah of which it is written according to the writing thereof. Therefore, we are told that this is not so. If one who does not understand Hebrew heard it read in Hebrew, he has performed his obligation, but he does not know what they are saying. He is on the same footing as women and ignorant people. Rab is strongly demurred to the saying, and do we know the meaning of Hahash Dorainum Bani Harimakim? But all the same, we perform the precept of reading it. Megillah and proclaiming the miracle, so they too perform the precept of reading the Megillah and proclaiming the miracle. If one reads it with break, Sirajin, he has performed his obligation. The rabbis did not know what was meant by Sirajin until one day they heard the maid servant of rabbi's household on seeing the rabbis enter at intervals say to them, How long are you going to come in by Sirajin? The rabbis did not know what was meant by Hilaglogo till one day they heard the handmaid of the household of rabbi on seeing a man peeling porchalock say to him, How long will you be peeling your Hilaglogo? The rabbis did not know what was meant by Salzalia and it shall exalt thee. One day they heard the handmaid of the house of rabbi say to a man who was curling his hair, How long will you be messel with your hair? The rabbis did not know what was meant by cast upon the Lord thy Yahab and he shall sustain thee, said Rabbi Barhana. One day I was traveling with a certain Arab and was Carrying a load, and he said to me, Lift up your Yehav and put it on one of the camels. The rabbis did not know what was meant by we teeth the abimitate of destruction till one day they heard the handmaid of the household of rabbi say to her companion, Take the tady the broom and toddy sweep the house. Our rabbis taught if one reads it with breaks, he has performed his obligation. Talmud, Mos Mejilah B. If with omissions he has not performed it, Armuna said in the name of Arjuna, even with breaks, if he stops long enough to finish the whole of it, he must go back to the beginning. Our Joseph said the Halachah is as stated by Armuna in the name of Arjuna. Abay inquired of Arjuna when it says long enough to finish the whole of it, does it mean from where he is to the end or from the beginning to the end? He replied, It means from the beginning to the end, as otherwise there would be no fixed standard. Our Abba said in the name of our Jeremiah B. Abba who said it in the name of Rab, the is
enters the synagogue and finds that the congregation has read half he must not say I will read half with the congregation and then I will read the other half but he must read it from the beginning to the end if he was half asleep he has performed his obligation what is meant by half asleep Arashi said he is asleep and not asleep awake and not awake if he is called he responds but he cannot give a rational answer though if he is reminded of what has been said he remembers if one was writing. It expounding it or correcting it if he put his mind to it etc how are we to understand this if he was conning each verse and then writing it what does it matter if he did put his mind to it he is writing by heart we must suppose therefore that he writes each verse and then recites it but does he thereby perform his obligation has not our helbo said in the name of our Hamabiguria who said it in the name of Rab the Halacha follows the view of him who says that all of it must be recited and even. According to the one who says that it is sufficient to recite from a Jew was it is necessary that the whole should be already written we must suppose therefore that Abigail lies before him and he reads from it verse by verse and then writes shall we then say that this supports Rabbi Barhana for Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan it is forbidden to write one letter of the Megillah say from a copy perhaps the Mishnah speaks only of a case where he just happened to have a copy before him the text above states Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan it is forbidden to write one letter say from a copy the following was cited in opposition to this it happened once that our Meir went to prolong the year in Isha and there was no Megillah there and he wrote one out by heart our said our Meir is different because to him could be applied the verse thine eyelids shall look straight before the Rami Behab asked our Jeremiah from 50 what is it? Meaning of thine eyelids afi pika shall look straight before thee he replied this refers to the words of the Torah of which it is written will thou direct tie thine eyes from it it is gone and even so our mayor could produce them correctly our hista found our handing writing scrolls without a copy he said to him you are quite qualified to write the whole Torah by heart but thus have the sages ruled it is forbidden to write one letter say from a copy seeing that he said you are qualified to write the whole Torah by heart we may conclude that he could produce them correctly and we see that our mayor actually did write in case of emergency it is different Abbe allowed the members of the household of Barhabu to write Tefillin and Mezuzoth without a copy what authority did he follow the following ten as it has been taught our Jeremiah says in the name of our teacher Tefillin and Mezuzoth may be written out without a copy and do not require to be written upon ruled lines of law. However, is that Tefillin do not require lines, but Mazuzoth do require lines, and both may be written without a copy. What is the reason they are well known by heart? If it was written with Sam, etc. Sam, this is Pain Secra, this is Vermilion, Rabbi Barhana said it is what we call Sicard of Vermilion, Cumus, this is Gum Talmud, Mas Medjula, Kankantum, this is Bootmaker's Blacking Tipper, this is a skin which has been salted and put in flour but not treated with gallnuts, near this is Paper IT. Must be written in Hebrew as it is written according to the writing thereof and according to the appointed time thereof on parchment and in inkwens. This rule we explain writing in one place by the use of the term in another. It is written here, and Esther the queen wrote, and it is written in another place. Then Barak answered them, he pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book Mishnah, a resident of a town who has gone to a walled city or of a walled. City who has gone to a town if he is likely to return to his own place reads according to the rule of his own place and otherwise reads with the rest from where must a man read the Megillah so as to fulfill his obligation our mayor says he must read the whole of it Rabbi Judah says he must read from there was a Jew our Jose says from after these things Gamara Rabbah said this rule applies only if he intends to return on the night of the 14th but if he does not mean to return on the night of the 14th he reads with the rest said Rabbah once do I derive this ruling because it is written therefore do the Jews of the villages that dwell in the unwalled town see now it is written the Jews of the villages why then should it be further written that dwell in the unwalled towns this teaches us that one who is a villager for one day is called a villager we have proved this for a villager how do we know that it applies also to inhabitants of walled towns it is reasonable to suppose that since a villager of one day is called a villager a walled city dweller of one day is called a walled city dweller Rabbah also said a villager who has gone to a town reads with the rest in any case what is the reason by rights he ought to read at the same time as the townspeople and it is the rabbis who made a concession to the villagers so that they might supply food and drink to their brethren in the large cities now this applies only so long as they are in their own place but when they are in the town they must read like the townspeople have a raised an objection to this from the following if a resident of a walled city has gone to a town in any case he reads according to the custom of his own place a resident of a walled city do you say his rule depends on whether he means to return what you must read then is a villager but must you not in any case explain the passage read then reads with the rest from where must a man read the etc it has been taught our Simeon. Biyohi says from on that night our Yohanan said all these authorities derived their lesson from the same verse as then Esther the queen and Mordecai the Jew wrote all the acts of power he who says that the whole Megillah must be read refers this to the power of Ahas whereas he who says it must be read from there was a Jew to the power of Mordecai he who says from after these things to the power of Haman and he who says from on that night to the power of the miracle Arhuna said they derived it from here and what did they see for this reason and what came upon them he who says that the whole of it must be read interprets thus what had Ahas seen to make him use the vessels of the temple it was for this reason that he reckoned seventy years and they had not yet been redeemed and what came upon them that he put Vashti to death he who says that it should be read from there was a Jew interprets thus what had Mordecai seen that he picked a quarrel with Haman it was for this reason that he made himself an object of worship and what came upon them that a miracle was performed for him he who says that it is to be read from after these things interprets thus what did Haman see to make him pick a quarrel with all the Jews it was for this reason that Mordecai did not bow down or prostrate himself and what came upon him they hung him and his sons on the tree he who says that it is to be read from on that night interprets thus what did Ahasuerus see to make him order the book of Chronicles to be brought it was for this reason that Esther invited Haman with him and what came upon them a miracle was performed for them our Helbo said in the name of our Hamabiguria who said it in the name of Rab the Halacha follows the view of him who says that the whole of it must be read and even according to him who says that it need be read only from there was a Jew it must all be written before him our Hamabiguria said in the name of Rab the Megillah is called book and it is also called Letter it is called book to show that if it is stitched with threads of flax it is not fit for use and it is called letter to show that if it is stitched with three threads of sinew it may be used our nom and said this is only on condition that they are evenly spaced Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel if one reads the Megillah from a volume containing the rest of the scriptures he has not performed his obligation Rabbah said this is the case only if it is not a little shorter or longer than the rest but if it is a little shorter or longer than the rest there is no objection to it Levi B Samuel was reading before Rab Judah in a Megillah Talmud Mas Mejilla B which was included in a volume of the scriptures he said to him I must tell you that they have said if one reads the Megillah from a volume containing the rest of the scriptures he has not fulfilled his obligation our high B Abba said in the name of our Yohan, and if one reads the Megillah in a volume containing the rest of it Scriptures he has not fulfilled his obligation and he at once qualified this remark by adding in a congregation our high B Abba also said in the name of our Yohanan it is a rule deriving from Moses at Sinai that a space should be left unstitched in the Sefer Torah and he at once qualified the remark by saying this rule was laid down only so that it should not be torn our high B Abba also said in the name of our Yohanan had there been in the cave in which Moses and Elijah stood a chink no bigger than the eye of a fine needle they would not have been able to endure the light as it says for man shall not see me and live our high B Abba also said in the name of our Yohanan what is the meaning of the verse and on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spoke with you in the mount it teaches us that the Holy One blessed be he showed Moses the minutiae of the Torah and the minutiae of the scribes and the innovations which would be introduced by the scribes and what are these the reading of the Megillah Mishnah all are qualified to read the Megillah except a deaf person an imbecile and a minor Arjuna declares a minor qualified Gemara who is the Tana that maintains that even if the deaf person has read it does not count our Mishnah said it is our Jose as we have learned if one reads the Shema inaudibly
Except a deaf man, an imbecile, and a minor. Of what kind of minor are we speaking? Of one who is not old enough to be trained in the performance of religious duties, but a minor who is old enough to be trained in religious duties may read even in the first instance. Since Arjuna declares a minor qualified, how then have you explained the first clause of the mission as following Arjuna and applying to an action already performed? What then of the statement made by Judah the son of Arsimian B? Does he one who can speak but not hear may set aside Teramah in the first instance? Whose view is this? If you say Arjuna, this cannot be because he would say his blessing once made is a blessing, but he may not say it in the first instance. If you say Arjuna, this also cannot be since he disallows the action even if already performed. What then will you say that it follows Arjuna and that he allows it even in the first instance? What then of this which has been taught a man should not say that? Grace after food in his heart, but if he does do so, he has performed his obligation. Whose opinion is this? It is neither that of Arjuna nor that of our Jose. For if it were to follow Arjuna, it would allow this even in the first instance. And if our Jose, it would disallow it even when performed Talmud. Mas Mejla, in fact, it follows Arjuna, and he holds that the act may be done even in the first instance. And there is no difficulty in the first quotation. He is giving his own opinion in the second. That of his teacher, as it has been taught, Arjuna says in the name of our Eliezer, be as I one who recites the Shema must do so audibly, as it says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one which implies, let thine ear hear what thy mouth utters. Our Meir says it says, which I command thee this day upon thy heart, according to the concentration of the mind. So is the value of the words now that you have come so far as this. You may even say that Arjuna was of the same opinion as his teacher, and it. Statement made by Judah the son of Arsimian B. Because he follows our Meir, Arjuna declares a minor qualified. It has been taught. Arjuna said, When I was a boy, I read it the Mahila before Artarfan and the elders in Lida. They said to him, A proof cannot be a from a recollection of boyhood. It has been taught. Rabbi said, When a boy, I read it before Arjuna. They said to him, A proof cannot be a from the very authority who allows the act. Why did they not say to him, A proof cannot be a From recollections of boyhood, they gave him a double answer. For one thing, they said, You were a boy, and besides, even had you been grown up, proof cannot be brought from the very authority who allows Mishnah the Mahila should not be read, neither should circumcision be performed, nor a ritual bath be taken, nor sprinkling be performed, and similarly, a woman keeping day for day should not take a ritual bath until the sun has risen. But if any of these things is done after dawn has appeared, it counts. As done tomorrow whence this rule about the Megillah because the scripture says and these days should be remembered mentioned and kept which implies that they are to be so by day but not by night shall we say that this is a refutation of our Joshua B. Levi for our Joshua B. Levi said it is a man's duty to read the Megillah by night and a second time by day when the Mishnah makes the statement it is referring to the day reading neither should circumcision be performed because it is written and on the eighth day he shall be circumcised neither should a ritual bath be taken nor sprinkling be performed because it is written and the clean person shall sprinkle on the unclean and on the seventh day and bathing is put on the same footing as sprinkling and similarly a woman who is keeping day for day should not take a ritual bath till the sun has risen this is obvious why should a woman keeping day for day be different from all others who are under obligation to take ritual baths or case had to be mentioned for you might suppose that she should be on the same footing as the first observation of one with an issue and the first observation of one with an issue has been put on the same footing as one with a seminal issue as it is written this is the law of him that hath an issue and of him from whom the flow of seed goeth out just as one with a seminal issue takes his bath by day so this one also should take his bath on the same day this woman however cannot bathe on the day because it is written all the days of the issue of her uncleanness she shall be as in the days of her impurity so you might say by night at least she might keep watch for a short time and then bathe therefore we are told that she must not do this because she requires to count day for day Talmud Mas Mejla B and counting must be by day if any of these things is done after dawn has appeared it counts as done once is this rule derived Rabbah said because the scripture says and God called the light day that which gradually becomes light he called day but according to this when it says and the darkness he called night are we to explain that which gradually becomes dark he called night is it not generally agreed that till the stars come out it is not night no set our zero we derive it from here so we wrought in the work and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared and it says further that in the night they may be a guard to us and may labor in the day what is the point of the second quotation you might say that from the time of the first rising of the dawn it is not yet day though from the time the sun begins to set it is already night and they were early and late therefore come and hear that in the night they may be a guard to us and may labor in the day mission of the whole of the day is a proper time for the reading of the Megillah and for the reciting of Hallel and for the blowing of the shofar and for taking up it Lulav and for the music prayer and for the additional sacrifices and for confession over the oxen and for the acknowledgement made over the tithe and for the confession of sins on the day of atonement for laying on of hands for slaughtering the sacrifices for waving for bringing near the vessel with the meal offering to the altar for taking a handful and for placing it on the fire for pinching off the head of the bird offering and for receiving the blood and for sprinkling and for making it unfaithful wife drink and for breaking the neck of the heifer and for purifying the leper the whole of the night is proper time for reaping the omer and for burning fat and limbs on the altar this is the general principle any commandment which is to be performed by day may be performed during the whole of the day and any commandment which is to be performed by night may be performed during the whole of the night tomorrow once this rule about the Megillah because the scripture says and these days shall be mentioned and kept for reading the hell as it is written from the rising of the sun to its going down. Our Joseph says because it is written this is the day on which the Lord hath wrought for the taking up of the lulav as it is written and ye shall take you on the first day for the blowing of the shofar as it is written it is a day of blowing the horn unto you for the additional sacrifices as it is written each on its own day and for the music prayer because the rabbis put this on the same footing as the additional sacrifices and for the confession made over the oxen an analogy being drawn between the atonement mentioned in this connection and that mentioned in connection with the day of atonement as it has been taught in reference to the day of atonement and he shall make atonement for himself and for his house the text speaks of atonement made by words and atonement is by day as it is written for on this day shall atonement be made for you and for the Acknowledgement made over the tithe as it is written and thou shalt say before the Lord thy God I have put away the hallowed things out of my house and in the same context it says this day the Lord thy God commandeth thee for laying on of hands and for slaughtering as it is written and he shall lay his hand and he shall kill and it is written in connection with killing on the same day that ye sacrifice and for waving as it is written and in the day when ye wave the sheep and for bringing near. Because this is compared to waving as it is written and the priest shall take the meal offering of jealousy out of the woman's hand and shall wave the meal offering and bring it near to the altar and for pinching and for taking a handful and for burning and for sprinkling as it is written in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to present their offerings and for making the unfaithful wife drink the word law which occurs in this connection is explained by its use in another it is written here and the priest shall execute upon her all this law and it is written elsewhere according to the law which they shall teach thee and according to the judgment Talmud, Mas Mejla just as judgment is by day so here it must be by day and for breaking the neck of the heifer in the school of Arjani it was said the word atonement is applied to it as to holy things and for the purification of the leper as it is written this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing the whole night is a proper time for reaping the omer since a master has said that reaping and counting are to be performed by night and the bringing by day and for burning fat and limbs as it is written all the night till the morning this is the general principle any commandment that is to be performed by day can be performed during the whole of the day the words this is the general principle are inserted to add what to add the setting of the cup and the removal of the cups and in Agreement with our Jose as it has been taught our Jose says if you remove the old shoe bread in the morning and set the new one in the evening there is no harm what then do I make of the verse before me continually this is to show that the table of the Lord should not be without bread a commandment which is to be performed by night may be performed during the whole of the night what does this add it adds the consumption of the paschal and thus differing from our Eliezer B. Ezra as it has been taught and they shall eat the flesh on that night our Eliezer B. Ezra said it says here on that night and
Whence this rule Arabab said because scripture says but as for thee stand here by me Arabab also said were it not written in the scripture it would be impossible for us to say it as it were the Holy One blessed be he also was standing Arabab further said how do we know that the master should not sit on a couch and teach his disciples while they sit on the ground because it says but as for thee do thou stand here by me our rabbis taught from the days of Moses up to Rabban Gamaliel. The Torah was learned only standing when Rabban Gamaliel died feebleness descended on the world and they learned the Torah sitting and so we have learned that from the time that Rabban Gamaliel died full honor ceased to be paid to the Torah one verse says and I sat W A shape in the mount and another verse says and I stood in the mount rap says he Moses stood when he learned and sat while he went over what he had learned our Hannah said he was neither sitting nor standing but stooping R. Yohanan said sitting Yoshapir your means only staying as it says and yes day Teshbu in Kadesh many days Rabbah said the easy things he learned standing and the hard ones sitting whether one reads it or to read it they have performed their obligation Talmud. Mas Mejil B.A. Tana stated this is not the case with the public reading of the Torah our rabbis taught as regards the Torah one reads and one translates and in no case must one read and two translate together as regards it. Prophets one reads and two may translate but in no case may two read and two translate as regards Hal and the Megillah even ten may read and ten may translate what is the reason since the people like it they pay attention and hear where it is a custom to say a blessing it should be said Abay said this rule applies only to the blessing after the reading but before the reading it is a religious duty to say a blessing since Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel over the performance of all. Religious precepts of blessing is said as one passes on over to perform them. How can you prove that this passing on means just in front of our nom and B. Isaac said scripture says that Agam has ran by way of the plain and overran W. A. Yabakish Ibe said we prove it from here and he himself passed over before them, or if you prefer I can prove it from here and their king is passed on before them and the Lord at the head of them. What blessing is said before the reading of the Megillah R. She's hate from Kate Reza happened once to read in the presence of Arashi and he made the blessings M N H. What blessing is said after it blessed art thou O Lord our God King of the universe, the God who has caused our quarrel and vindicated our cause and executed our vengeance and punished our adversaries for us and visited retribution on all the enemies of our soul. Blessed art thou O Lord who avenges Israel on all their enemies. Rabbi says the concluding words are the God who saves our Papa said. Therefore we should say both blessed art thou O Lord who avenges Israel on all their enemies the God who saves on Mondays and Thursdays and on Sabbath at Minhoth read what do these three represent R.C. said the Pentateuch the prophets and the hagiographer Rabbah said priests levites and lay Israelites but now in the statement of our Shimei not less than ten verses of the Torah should be read in the synagogue the verse and God spoke to Moses saying being counted as one what do these ten represent our Joshua B. Levi said the ten men of leisure in the synagogue our Joseph said the ten commandments which were given to Moses on Sinai our Levi said the ten times hallowed praise which David uttered in the book of Psalms our Yohanan said the ten utterances with which the world was created what are these the expressions and God said in the first chapter of Genesis but there are only nine words in the beginning are also a creative utterance since it is written by the word of the Lord. The heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Rabbah said, If the first reads four verses, he is to be commended. If the second reads four verses, he is to be commended. If the third reads four verses, he is to be commended. If the first reads four verses, he is to be commended. As we have learned, there were three bags holding three SEAHS each in which the priests take up the money offerings out of the shekel chamber and they were labeled Aleph Beth Gimel so as to show which was taken out first so that sacrifices could be brought from that one first since it is a religious duty to offer from the first. If the middle one reads four verses, he is to be commended as it has been taught. The seven lamps shall give light in front of the candlestick. This teaches that they were made to face the western lamp and the western lamp faced the Sheshanah and our Yohanan said this shows that the middle one is specially prized. If the last reads four verses, he is to be commended. Because of the principle that in dealing with holy things we promote but never degrade our Papa was once in the synagogue of Abgobar when the first one who was called up read four verses and our Papa commended him neither less nor more etc. Atana stated the one who reads first makes a blessing before the reading and the one who reads last makes a blessing after it nowadays that all make a blessing both before and after the reading the reason is that the rabbis ordained this to avoid error on the part of people entering and leaving synagogue on new moons and on the intermediate days of the festival for red will be rab inquired of Rabbah how is the portion of new moon to be divided the paragraph commencing command the children of Israel and say to them has eight verses how are we to deal with them shall two persons read three verses each then two verses will be left to the end of the paragraph and it is not proper to leave over less than three verses to the end of the paragraph. Shall two read four verses each then seven verses will be left altogether the paragraph beginning and on the Sabbath day being two and the paragraph beginning and on your new moons being five how are we to do shall we read as one portion two from one paragraph and one from the next Talmud, Mas Mejilei this is not right since we do not read less than three verses together at the beginning of a paragraph shall the reader read two from one and three from the other then only two verses are left to the end of the second paragraph he replied on this point I have not heard any pronouncement but I have learned the rule in a somewhat similar case as we have learned on Sundays the Muhammad read the paragraph in the beginning and let there be a firmament and to this a gloss was added in the beginning is read by two and let there be a firmament by one and we were somewhat perplexed by this for that the paragraph let there be a firmament can be read by one we understand. Since it has three verses but how can in the beginning be read by two seeing that it has only five verses and it has been taught he who reads in the Torah should not read less than three verses and it was stated in answer to this question that Rab says he should repeat and Samuel says he should divide a verse Rab said he should repeat why should he not say divide he was of opinion that any verse which Moses had not divided we may not divide whereas Samuel held that we may divide but surely. Our Hananiah the Bible teacher said I was in great pain in the house of our Hananiah the Great and he would not allow me to make additional verse divisions save for the school children because they are there to be taught now what was the reason there why he was allowed to make divisions because it could not be avoided here too it cannot be avoided Samuel said that he divides why did he not say that he repeats it is a precaution to prevent error on the part of those coming in and going out and Objection against both these views was brought from the following a section of six verses may be read by two persons a section of five verses must be read by one if the first reads three verses the second reads the remaining two from the section and one from the next some however say that he reads three from the next because not less than three verses should be read at the beginning of a section now if it is as you said then according to the one who says he should repeat let him repeat and according to the one who says he should divide let him divide it is different here because this method is open to him our tenham said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi the halacha follows the alternative opinion mentioned our tenham also said in the name of our Joshua B. Levi just as at the beginning of a section not less than three verses should be read so at the end of a section not less than three verses should be left surely this is obvious seeing that in regard to the beginning of a section where the first tana is not so strict the alternative opinion is strict is it not certain that in regard to the verses left at the end of the section where the first tana is strict the alternative opinion will also be strict you might argue that it is usual for people to come into synagogue during the reading of the law but it is not usual for them to go out and leave the scroll of the law while it is being read therefore we are told that we do not argue thus but now with regard to the first tana why does he forbid less than three verses to be left at the end of the section on account of people going out of synagogue is it not then with regard to the beginning also he should take precautions on account of people coming in i can answer that a person coming in inquires how much has been read rather the son of Rabbah sent to inquire of our joseph what is the law he sent him backward the law is that the verse is repeated and it is a middle reader who repeats this is it General rule whenever there is a music etc. The question was raised how many read on a public fast day shall we say that on new moon and the intermediate days of the festival when there is an additional sacrifice for read but here where there is no additional sacrifice this is not the case or shall we argue that here also there is an additional prayer come and here on new moons and on the intermediate days of festivals for read from which we conclude that on public fast only three read
Um, the court paid him special honor and this he did only in his presence but not when he was not present it is reasonable also to assume that Rab read as Cohen because if you presume that he read as a layman why did he say a blessing before reading it was after the regulation had been made if so he should have said a blessing after reading also where Rab was present there was a difference because people came in late Talmud, Mas Mejlabi but did not go out during the reading of the law. Come and here the general principle is that wherever the people would be hindered from their work is on a public fast and on the month of the three read and where the people would not be hindered from their work is on new moons and the intermediate days of festivals for read the settles the question said Arashi but we have learned differently this is the general rule wherever there is a music but not a festival for read now what is added by the words this is the general rule is it not a Public fast and the month of it, but according to Arashi, whose view then is recorded in the Mishnah, it is neither that of the first ten nor of our Jose, as it has been taught. If it the month of it falls on Monday or Thursday, three red and one of them says a half era. If on Tuesday or Wednesday one reads and the same one says the half era, our Jose, however, says that in all cases three red and one of them says the half era, but still the words this is the general rule are difficult, no they. At new moon and the intermediate days, but as these are stated explicitly on new moons and the intermediate days for red, the Mishnah is merely giving an indication that you should not say that the festivals and the intermediate days have the same rule, but you should take this as a general principle that for every additional distinguishing mark an additional person reads hence on new moon and the intermediate days when there is an additional sacrifice for red on festivals when in. Addition work is prohibited. Five read on the day of atonement. When in addition there is a penalty of karat. Six read on Sabbath. When there is a penalty of stoning. Seven read the text above stated. Rab happened to be in Babylon on a public fast. He came forward and read in the scroll. He made a blessing before commencing, but made no blessing after finishing. The whole congregation subsequently fell on their faces, but Rab did not fall on his face. Why did not Rab fall on his face? There was a stone pavement there, and it has been taught neither shall you place any figured stone in your land to bow down upon it. Upon it you may not bow down in your land, but you may prostrate yourselves on the stones in the temple. This teaching is in accord with the opinion of Allah, who said the Torah here is forbidding only a pavement of stone. If that is the case, why is only Rab mentioned? All the rest should equally have abstained. It was in front of Rab, but could he not have gone among the congregation? And fallen on his face, he did not want to trouble the congregation. Or if you like, I can say that Rab usually spread out his hands and feet when he fell on his face, and he followed the opinion of Allah who said the Torah forbade only the spreading out of the hands and feet. But could he not have fallen on his face without spreading out his hands and feet? He did not care to change his custom. Or if you like, I can say that for a distinguished man, the rule is different as laid down by our Eliezer. For our Eliezer said, A man of eminence is not permitted to fall on his face unless he is sure of being answered like Joshua, son of Nun, as it is written. Wherefore now art thou fallen upon thy face? Our rabbis have taught means falling upon the face, as it says, and Bathsheba bowed W. Atikad with her face to the earth, carry means going down upon the knees, and so it says, Solomon arose from kneeling, Micro on his knees, Hishtah, is spreading out of the hands and feet, as it says. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren come to prostrate ourselves lahish to walk before thee to the earthly by displayed Akita in the presence of Rabbi and became lame but was this the cause of his accident did not our Eliezer say a man should never complain against heaven because a great man complained against heaven and he became lame and who was healed by both things caused it our high b and said I saw a Talmud, Mas Mejlae and Rabba bent over to one side on festivals five read on the day of atonement six etc whose view does the mission embody it is neither that of our Ishmael nor of our Akiva as it has been taught on festivals five read on the day of atonement six and on Sabbath seven this number may neither be increased nor diminished so our Ishmael our Akiva says on festivals five read on the day of atonement seven and on Sabbath six this number may not be diminished but it may be increased whom does the mission follow if our Ishmael it conflicts with him over the additional Number of Arakiba conflicts with him over the question of six and seven. Rabbi said the view is that of a ten of the school of Arishmael. Since in the school of Arishmael it was stated on festivals five on the day of atonement six on Sabbath seven, this number may not be diminished, but it may be increased. So Arishmael Arishmael is now in conflict with himself. Two ten name report Arishmael differently, who is responsible for the statement which has been taught on festivals. People come late to synagogue and leave early on the day of atonement. They come early and leave late on Sabbath. They come early and leave early. Shall I say it is Arakiba who makes an extra man read on the day of atonement? You may also say it is Arishmael. His reason being that the order of the service of the day is very long. What do these three five and seven represent? Different answers were given by our Isaac B. Namani and one who was with him, namely our Simeon B. Pazi, or according to others by our Simeon B. Pazi and one who was with him, namely our Isaac bin Amani, or according to others, our Samuel bin Amani, one said that these represent the respective number of Hebrew words in the three verses of the priestly benedictions, while the other said the three keepers of the door, the five represent five of them that saw the king's face, and the seven, seven men of them that saw the king's face, are Joseph learned three, five, and seven, three keepers of the door, five of them that saw the king's face, and seven that saw the king's face, said Abbe to him until today, your honor never explained the reason to us. He replied, I never knew that you wanted to know. Did you ever ask me anything which I did not tell you? Jacob the men asked our Judah, What do the six of the day of atonement represent? He replied, The six who stood at the right of Ezra and the six who stood at his left, as it says, and Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose, and beside him stood Matty Thyshima. And Anna and Uriah and Hilkiah and Masiah on his right hand and on his left hand Pedeah and Missal and Malchijah and Hashem and Hashbat and Azekariah and Meshulam. But these last are seven. Zechariah is the same as Meshulam. And why is he called Meshulam? Because he was blameless. Meshulam in his conduct, our rabbis taught all are qualified to be among the seven who read even a minor and a woman only. The sages said that a woman should not read in the Torah out of respect for the congregation. The question was raised: Should the Mafir be counted among the seven? Our Hunai and our Jeremiah be answered differently. One said that he does count, and the other that he does not count. The one who says he does count points to the fact that he actually reads from the Torah. Also, while the one who says he does not count relies on the dictum of Allah, who said, Why is it proper for the one who reads the half era from the Prophet to read in the Torah first to show respect for the Torah? Since then he reads only out of respect for the Torah, he should not be counted to make up the seven. The following was cited in objection to this. He who says the half era from the Prophet should read not less than twenty-one verses corresponding to those read by the seven who have read in the Torah. Now, if it is as you say, there are twenty-four. Since it is only out of respect for the Torah that he reads Talmud, Mas Mejla no corresponding verses to those read by him are required in the prophetical reading. Rabbi strongly demurred to this. There is he said the half era of add your burnt offerings in which there are not twenty-one verses, and yet we read it. The case is different there because the subject is completed before twenty-one verses, but where the subject is not completed, do we then not read less than twenty-one? Has not our Samuel B. Abba said many times, I stood before our Yohanan, and when I had read ten verses, he said, Stop both of you in a place where there is a. Translator it is different since our Talaf Abi Samuel has taught this rule was laid down only for a place where there is no translator but where there is a translator a stop may be made earlier mission of the introduction to the Shema is not repeated nor does one pass before the ark nor do the priests lift their hands nor is the Torah read publicly nor the half error read from the prophet nor are halts made at funerals nor is the blessing for mourners said nor the comfort of mourners nor the blessing of the bridegrooms nor is the name of God mentioned in the invitation to say grace save in the presence of ten for redeeming sanctified properties nine and the priests are sufficient and similarly with human beings tomorrow once these rules are high be Abba said in the name of our Yohanan because scripture says but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel every act of sanctification requires not less than ten how does the verse denote this as our high taught we explain the word among here by reference to its use in another place it is written here but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel and it is written elsewhere separate yourselves from among this congregation and we further explain the
Priest, but cannot I rather save five priests and five Israelites? This is indeed a difficulty, and similarly with human beings, but can a human being become sanctified? Our Abba said it refers to one who says, My money value be upon me, as it has been taught. If a man says, My money value be upon me, we estimate his value as we would that of a slave, and a slave is put on the same footing as landed property as it is written, and you may make them an inheritance for your children after you to hold. For a possession, Mishnah, one who reads the Torah in synagogue should read not less than three verses, and he should not read to the translator more than one verse at a time. Talmud, Mas Mejla, and a prophet, however, he may give him three at a time. If the three verses constitute three separate paragraphs, he must read them to the translator one by one. The reader may skip from place to place in a prophet, but not in the Torah. How far may he skip only so far that the translator will not? Have stopped before he finds his place tomorrow. What do these three verses represent? R.C. said the Pentateuch, the prophets, and the hagiographer. He should not read to the translator more than one verse in a prophet. However, he may read three of the three verses constitute three paragraphs. He must read them one by one. For instance, the three verses for the set the Lord gave were sold for not for the set the Lord God. My people went down a four time to Egypt. Now, therefore, what do I hear? Set the Lord, the reader may skip in a prophet, but not in the Torah. A contradiction was pointed out between this and the following. He, the high priest, reads on the day of atonement after the death and only on the tenth day, but he is skipping of a reply. There is no contradiction in the one case. The translator will have come to a stop before the place is found. In the other case, he will not have come to a stop, but it states in connection with this the reader may skip in the prophet. But he may not skip in the Torah, and how far may he skip so far that the translator will not have stopped from this? We infer that in the Torah he may not skip at all. The truth is said of a that there is no contradiction in the one case the reader deals with one subject, in the other case with two, and in fact it has been taught the reader may skip in the Torah provided he keeps to one subject and in a prophet even if he goes on to another subject, and in both cases only so far that the translator will not have stopped before he finds the place it has been taught in another place the reader may not skip from one prophet to another in the twelve minor prophets he may skip provided only that he does not skip from the end of the book to the beginning mission the one who says the half era from the prophet repeats also the blessings before the Shema and passes before the ark and lifts up his hands if he is a child his father or his teacher passes before the ark in his place. A Child may read in the Torah and translate, but he may not pass before the ark nor lift up his hands. A person in rags may repeat the blessings before the Shema and translate, but he may not read in the Torah nor pass before the ark nor lift up his hands. A blind man may repeat the blessings before the Shema and translate. Our Judah says one who has never seen the light from his birth may not recite the blessings before the Shema. Gemara, what is the reason why the one who says the half era has this privilege? Our Papa said as a mark of honor. Our Shema said because otherwise quarrels might arise. What difference is there in practice between them? There is a difference in the case of one who reads Gratis. We learn if he is a child, his father or his teacher passes before the ark in his place. If now you say it is to avoid quarrels, will a child pick a quarrel? What then it is a mark of respect? Does a child receive marks of respect? What you must say is out of respect for his father and his teacher. Talmud, Mas Mejil be so here too. There is the question of quarrels involving him or his teacher. A person in rags may repeat, etc. Will be Rab inquired of Abbe is a child in rags allowed to read in the Torah? He replied, You might as well ask about a naked one. Why is one without any clothes not allowed out of respect for the congregation? So here he is not allowed out of respect for the congregation. A blind man may repeat the blessings, etc. It has been taught, they said to our Judah, many have discerned sufficiently with their mind's eye to expound the chariot, and yet they never saw it. What says our Judah to this? There he can reply, All depends on the discernment of the heart and the expounder by concentrating his mind can know, but here one reads for the benefit which he derives therefrom, and this one derives no benefit. The rabbis, however, hold that he does derive a benefit for the reason given by our Jose as it has been taught. Our Jose said, I was long perplexed by this verse and out. Shall grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness now what difference I ask does it make to a blind man whether it is dark or light nor did I find the answer until the following incident occurred I was once walking on a pitch black night when I saw a blind man walking in the road with a torch in his hand I said to him my son why do you carry this torch he replied as long as I have this torch in my hand people see me and save me from the holes and the thorns and briars mission a priest whose hands are deformed should not lift up his hands to say the priestly blessing our Judah says also one whose hands are discolored with W O A D should not lift up his hands because this makes the congregation look at him Gemara Tana stated the deformities which were laid down as disqualifying are on the face the hands and the feet are Joshua believe I said if his hands are spotted he should not lift up his hands it has been taught similarly if his hands are spotted he should not lift up his hands if they are curved inwards or bent sideways he should not lift up his hands R.C. said a priest from Haifa or Betshin should not lift up his hands it has been taught to the same effect we do not allow to pass before the ark either men from Betshin or from Haifa or from Tibetan because they pronounce Aleph as Ayan and Ayan as Aleph said Arhaya to our Simeon be rabbi if you were a Levite you would not be qualified to chant because your voice is thick he went and told his father who said to him go and say to him when you come to the verse and I will wait we hide before the Lord will you not be a rabbi and blasphemer Arhuna said a man whose eyes run should not lift up his hands but was there not one in the neighborhood of Arhuna who used to spread forth his hands the townspeople had become accustomed to him it has been taught to the same effect a man whose eyes run should not lift up his hands but if the townspeople are accustomed to him he is permitted Aryohanan. Said a man blind in one eye should not lift up his hands, but was not there one in the neighborhood of Aryohanan who used to lift up his hands? The townspeople were accustomed to him. It has been taught to the same effect. A man blind in one eye should not lift up his hands, but if the townspeople are accustomed to him, he is permitted. Our Judah says a man whose hands are discolored should not lift up his hands. A tan stated if most of the men of the town follow the same occupation, it is permitted. Mission if one says I will not pass before the ark to act as reader in colored robes, he must not pass before it in white robes either. If he says I will not pass before it in shoes, he must not pass before it barefoot either. A phylactery for the head which is made round is dangerous and has no religious value to put them on the forehead or on the palm of the hand in the manner of the heresy to overlay them with gold or put the one for the hand on one sleeve is the manner of it. Outsiders Gemara in colored robes what is the reason why he must not act as reader we are apprehensive that he has a leaning towards minute to make one's phylactery round is dangerous and has no religious value may we say that our Mishnah teaches here the same as our rabbis taught that phylacteries should be square as a law set down by Moses at Sinai and Rabbah explained this to mean in their seam and in their diagonal our Papa said the Mishnah is speaking only of those which are made as round as a nut Mishnah if one says Talmud, Mas Mejla may the good bless thee this is a custom of heresy if he says may thy mercies reach the nest of a bird may thy name be mentioned for well doing we give thanks we give thanks he is silenced if he introduces euphemisms into the portion dealing with forbidden marriages he is silenced if he says instead of and thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart to Moloch thou shalt not give to transfer it to a Gentile woman he is both Silence and rebuke tomorrow we understand the prohibition of saying we give thanks we give thanks because he seems to be addressing two powers also of thy name be mentioned for well doing because this implies for good yes for evil no and we have learned it is the duty of a man to bless God for evil in the same way as he blesses for good but what is the reason for prohibiting may thy mercies reach the nest of a bird different answers were given by two Amram in the West Palestine our Hosebi. Abin and our Hosebi Zibah one said it is because he creates jealousy in the work of the creation and the other says it is because he makes the commands of the Holy One blessed be he acts of grace whereas they are only decrees a certain man went down before the ark in the presence of Rabbah and said thou hast shown pity to the nest of a bird do thou have pity and mercy on us thou hast shown pity to an animal and its young do thou have pity and mercy on us said Rabbah how well this Rabbah knows. How to placate his master said Abbe to him, but we have learned he is silenced. Rabbi only wanted to sharpen Abbe's wits. A certain reader went down before the
Reason why he repeats is because at first he was not thinking of what he said and now he does think he replied is he to treat heaven like an ordinary acquaintance if he does not think of what he is saying I will hit him with a hammer till he does think if he introduces euphemisms into the passage dealing with forbidden marriages he is silenced our Joseph learned if for example he says the shame of his father the shame of his mother if one says and thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart etc in the school of our Ishmael it was stated the text speaks of an Israelite who has intercourse with a Kutian woman and begets from her a son for idolatry mission of the incident of Reuben is read in synagogue but not translated the story of Tamar is read and translated the first account of the incident of the golden calf is both read and translated the second is read but not translated the blessing of the priest is read but not translated the stories of David and Amnon are read but not translated the portion of the chariot is not read as a half Arab but our Judah permits this our Eliezer says the portion make known to Jerusalem is not read as a half Arab Gemara our rabbis taught some portions of the scripture are both read and translated some are read but not translated and some are neither read nor translated the following are both read and translated Nemonic B-L-T-E-K-N-N-S-H-P-H the account of the creation is both read and translated certainly you might think that through hearing it people are led to inquire what is above and what is below Talmud, Mas Mejla B and what is before and what is after therefore we are told that this is no objection the story of Lot and his two daughters is both read and translated certainly you might think that we should forbear out of respect for Abraham therefore we are told that this is no objection the story of Tamar and Judah is both read and translated certainly we might think that we should forbear out of Respect for Judah therefore we are told that this is no objection the passage really redounds to his credit because it records that he confessed the first account of the making of the calf is both read and translated certainly you might think that we should forbear out of respect for Israel therefore we are told that this is no objection on the contrary it is agreeable to them because it was followed by atonement the curses and blessings are both read and translated certainly you might think that we should forbear lest the congregation should become disheartened therefore we are told that this is no objection warnings and penalties are both read and translated certainly you might think that we should forbear for fear that they may come to keep the commandments out of fear therefore we are told that this is no objection the story of Amnon and Tamar is both read and translated certainly you might think that we should forbear out of respect for David therefore we are told that this is no objection the story of the concubine in Jabia is both read and translated certainly you might think that we should forbear out of respect for Benjamin therefore we are told that this is no objection the passage commencing make known to Jerusalem her abominations is both read and translated certainly this is stated to exclude the view of our Eliezer as it has been taught on one occasion a man read in the presence of our Eliezer make known to Jerusalem her abominations he said to him while you are investigating the abominations of Jerusalem go and investigate the abominations of your own mother inquiries were made into his birth and he was found to be illegitimate Nemonic R.E.B.D. and the incident of Reuben is read but not translated on one occasion our Hannah and Abigamaliel went to Kabul and the reader of the congregation read and it came to pass when Israel abode and he said to the translator translate only the latter part of the verse and the sages Commended his action the second account of the calf is read but not translated what is the second account of the calf from and Moses said up to and Moses saw it has been taught a man should always be careful in wording his answers because on the ground of the answer which Aaron made to Moses the unbelievers were able to deny God as it says and I cast it into the fire and this calf came forth the priestly blessing is read but not translated what is the reason because it contains the words. May he lift up the accounts of David and Amnon are neither read nor translated but you just said that the story of Amnon and Tamar is both read and translated there is no contradiction the former statement refers to where it says Amnon son of David the latter to where it says Amnon simply our rabbis taught wherever an indelicate expression is written in the text we substitute a more polite one in reading us for Yishalino we read Yishkabana for B.A. Paul and we read B.A.T. Horam for here we read Dagan name for Eli call Ethorham we lish to Ethmeme shiny him we read Eli call Eth so Ethem we lish to Ethmeme raggle him for Lama Heroth we read Lemazoth our Joshua B. Korha however says that the actual word Lama Heroth is read because it is a term of opprobrium for idolatry our nom and said all jiving is forbidden save jiving at idolatry which is permitted as it is written bell bowed down Nebo stupid and the text goes on they stoop they bow down together they cannot deliver the burden etc our Jani learns the same lesson from here the inhabitants of Samaria shall be in dread for the calves of Beth Haven for the people thereof shall mourn over it and the priests thereof shall tremble for it for its glory because it is departed from it read not its glory Kabato but its burden Kabito our Hunabi Mano said in the name of Araha the son of Araka it is permitted to an Israelite to say to a Kuti and take your idol and put it in your shin tofr as she said it is permissible to abuse a person of ill fame with the term Gimelshin. It is permissible to praise a person of good report, and if one does praise him, blessings shall rest upon his head. Chapterib Mishnah. If the townspeople sell the town square, they may buy with the proceeds a synagogue. If they sell a synagogue, they may buy with the proceeds an ark. If they sell an ark, they may buy wrappings for scrolls. If they sell wrappings, Talmud, Mas Mejla, they may buy scrolls. If they sell scrolls, they may buy a sefer Torah. But if they sell a sefer Torah, they may not buy with the proceeds scrolls. If they sell scrolls, they may not buy wrappings. If they sell wrappings, they may not buy an ark. If they sell an ark, they may not buy a synagogue. If they sell a synagogue, they may not buy a town square. The same applies to any money left over Gemara. If the townspeople sell the town square, Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan, this is the view of our Menahem Behose. Anonymous author, but the sages say that no sanctity attaches to the square. What is the reason of our menahem Jose? Because the people pray in it on fast days and at gatherings of the Mayamid. What say the rabbis to this? That happens only exceptionally if they sell the synagogue. They may buy an ark. Our Samuel B. Naman, he said in the name of our Jonathan, this rule applies only to a synagogue in a village, but a synagogue in a large town, since people from all parts come to it, may not be sold it being regarded as belonging to a wider public. Said our Ashi as for the synagogue in Mahamaj. Although people come to it from all parts, since they come at my discretion, I can if I like sell it. An objection was raised. Our Judah says it is recorded of the synagogue of the coppersmiths in Jerusalem that they sold it to our Eliezer and he used it for his own purposes. And yet that was one in a large town that was a very small synagogue, and they themselves had made it. The following was further raised in. Objection in a house of the land of your possession. Your possession is defiled by leprosy, but Jerusalem is not defiled by leprosy. Our Judah said, I have not heard this laid down. Save with respect to the area of the sanctuary alone. We thus see that according to our Judah synagogues and houses of study are defiled. And yet, why according to you should this be seeing that they belong to the town? I would amend the above statement to read. Our Judah says, I have not heard this rule laid down. Save in relation to a sanctified place. Only on what point do these two authorities join issue? The first Tanah is of opinion that Jerusalem was not apportioned to any of the tribes, while our Judah was of opinion that it was apportioned to certain of the tribes. And their difference is the same as that of the following Tanah. As it has been taught, what part of Jerusalem was in the portion of Judah, the Temple Mount, in the priestly chambers, and the courts, and what was in the portion of Benjamin? It Hall and the sanctuary and the holy of holies a strip projected from the portion of Judah into the portion of Benjamin and in it the altar of sacrifice was built and every day the righteous Benjamin fretted over it desiring to swallow it up as it says crouching over it all the day therefore Benjamin was privileged to become the host of the Sheshana the following Tana however held that Jerusalem was not a portion to any of the tribes as it has been taught people cannot let out houses in Jerusalem as they do not belong to them or Eliezer Bezotic says they may not hire out beds either therefore householders who took in guests would seize the skins of visitors sacrifices forcibly have a remark we may see from this that it is good matters for a man to leave his empty wine flask and his skin rug at his guest house Rabbah said this rule was meant to apply only where the seven good men of the town did not sell in the assembly of the townspeople but if the seven good men of it Town sold in the assembly of the townspeople even Talmud, Mas Mejla B. If it was for a drinking place the transaction holds good Rubin had the
Be woven into cloth and no authority says that in such a case there is force in mere intention with regard to a synagogue which has been made a gift. There is a difference of opinion between Araha and Rabbana, one forbidding it to be used for secular purposes and one permitting the one who forbade did so on the ground that there is nothing to which its holiness is transferred, while the one who permitted it argued that if he the giver did not derive some benefit from the act, he would not give it so that in the end the gift is equivalent to a sale. Our rabbis taught accessories of religious observances when disused are to be thrown away, accessories of holiness are to be stored away. The following are accessories of religious observances of Sukkot, Lulabish, for fringes. The following are accessories of holiness, large sacks for keeping scrolls of the scripture in Tefillin and Mazuzah, the mantle for a Sefer Torah and a Tefillin bag and Tefillin straps. Rabbis said at first I used to. Think that the stand on which the Sefer Torah is placed is an accessory to an accessory and that it is permitted when however I saw that the Sefer Torah is placed actually on it I came to the conclusion that it is all accessory of holiness and is forbidden. Rabbah further said at first I used to think that the curtain is an accessory of an accessory when however I observed that it is folded over and a scroll is placed on it I came to the conclusion that it is itself an accessory of holiness and forbidden. Rabbah further said when an ark is falling asunder to make it into a smaller ark is permitted but to make it into a stand is forbidden. Rabbah further said when a curtain is worn out to make it into a mantle for a whole scroll of the law is permitted but for a single humash is forbidden. Rabbah further said these bags for humashim and boxes for scrolls are accessories of holiness and must be stored away when disused is not this obvious you might think that these are used not out of Respect for the scrolls but merely for protection therefore we are told that this is not so there was a synagogue of the Roman Jews which opened out into a room where a dead body was deposited the Kohanim wanted to go in there to pray and they came and asked Rabbah what they should do he said take the ark and put it down there since it is a wooden vessel which is meant to be stationary and every wooden vessel which is meant to be stationary is immune from defilement and forms a partition to prevent the passage of defilement said the rabbis to Rabbah but sometimes it is moved while a scroll of the law is resting on it and thus it becomes a vessel which is moved both when full and when empty if that is so he said there is no remedy Marzutra said wrappings of scrolls which are worn out may be used for making shrouds for a meth mitzvah and this act constitutes their storing away Rabbah also said a scroll of the law which is worn out may be buried by the side of a Talmud Hakam even Though he be one who only repeats Halacha or Ahabi Jacob said it should be put in an earthenware vessel as it says and put them in an earthen vessel that they may continue many days. Our Papi said in the name of Rabbah to turn a synagogue into a college is permitted to turn a college into a synagogue is forbidden. Our Papa, however, also reporting Rabbah states the opposite. Araha said Talmud, Mas Mejla, the statement of our Papi is the more probable since our Joshua B. Levi said it is permissible to make a synagogue into a Beth Hamidrash. The seems conclusive. Barkeeper gave the following exposition what is the meaning of the verse and he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. Even every great man's house burnt he with fire. The house of the Lord, this is the temple, the king's house, this is the royal palace, all the houses of Jerusalem. Literally, even every great man's house burnt he with fire. Our Yohanan and our Joshua B. Levi gave different interpretations of. This one said it means the place where the Torah is magnified, the other the place where a prayer is magnified, the one who says Torah bases himself on the verse, the Lord was pleased for his righteousness sake to make the Torah great and glorious, the one who says prayer bases himself on the verse, tell me I pray thee the great things that Elisha has done and what Elisha did he did by means of prayer, it may be presumed that it was our Joshua B. Levi who said the place where Torah is magnified since our Joshua B. Levi said that a synagogue may be turned into a Beth Hamidrash, which is a clear indication, but if they sell a Sefer Torah they may not buy scrolls. The question was raised, what is the rule about selling an old Sefer Torah to buy a new one? Do we say that since we do not thus go to higher grade in the use of the money it is forbidden, or are we to say that since there is no higher grade to go to there is no objection come in here, but if they sell a Sefer Torah they may not buy. Scrolls it is scrolls that they may not buy but to buy a Sefer Torah with the money of a Sefer Torah is unobjectionable no but the Mishnah speaks of something already done we ask whether it may be done in the first instance come and hear a Sefer Torah may be rolled up in the wrappings of a Humash or a Humash in the wrappings of a scroll of prophets and hagiographer but prophets and hagiographer may not be rolled up in the wrappings of a Humash nor a Humash in the wrappings of a Sefer Torah now it states here at any rate that a Sefer Torah may be rolled up in the wrappings of a Humash as much as to say in the wrappings of a Humash it may be but in those of another Sefer Torah it may not be look at the succeeding clause but a Humash may not be rolled up in the wrappings of a Sefer Torah which would imply that there is no objection against wrapping a Sefer Torah in those of another Sefer Torah the fact is that from this statement no conclusion can be drawn come and hear a Sefer Torah may be laid on another Sefer Torah and a Sefer Torah on separate Humashim and separate Humashim on scrolls of the Prophets and Hagiographer but scrolls of the Prophets and Hagiographer may not be placed on Humashim nor Humashim on a Sefer Torah you speak here of laying laying is different because it is impossible to avoid it for if you do not suppose this we may ask how are we allowed to roll up the scroll seeing that in so doing we lay one sheet on another the fact is that since this cannot be avoided it is permitted and so here also since it cannot be avoided it is permitted come and here since Rabbi Barhana said in the name of our Yohanan who had it from Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel a man should not sell an old Sefer Torah in order to buy a new one with the proceeds there the reason is lest he should afterwards neglect to do so here we speak of a case where the new one is written and waiting to be paid for what is the rule in such a case come and here since our Yohanan said in the name of our Meir a man should not sell a Sefer Torah save in order to study the Torah and to marry a wife from this we may conclude may we not that there is no objection against buying one Sefer Torah with the proceeds of another perhaps study comes under a different rule since study leads on to practice marrying also is permitted because it says he created it not a waste he formed it to be inhabited but to buy a Sefer Torah with the proceeds of another is still not permitted come and here a man should not sell a Sefer Torah even though he does not require it Rabbi Simeon B. Gamaliel went further and said even if a man has no food and he sells a Sefer Torah or his daughter he will never have any luck from that money the same applies to any money left over Rabbi said this is a rule only if they had money left over from a sale but if they had money left over from a collection it is permitted to use it for any purpose Abbe cited the following. In objection to this one does this rule apply if they made no stipulation but if they made a stipulation they may even give it to the Duchess USIA now how are we to understand this shall we say that they the seven good men sold the holy article and had money left over after purchasing a new one and even if they made a stipulation that they could do what they liked with it what does it avail we must say therefore that they collected money and had some left over and the reason is given that they made a stipulation but if they made no stipulation they cannot I still maintain that what is meant is that they sold and had something left and the statement should run thus when does this rule apply when the seven good men of the town did not make any stipulation in the assembly of the townspeople but if the seven good men of the town made a stipulation in the assembly of the townspeople it may be used even for paying a Duchess USIA Abbe said to a rabbinical student who used to repeat the mission in the presence of Arshis hate have you ever heard from Arshis hate what is meant by Duchess USIA he replied this is what Arshis hate said the town horseman Abbe thereupon observed this shows that a rabbinical student who has heard something of which he does not know the meaning should ask one who is frequently in the company of the rabbi since he is almost certain to have heard the answer from some great man or Yohanan said in the name of our mayor if the representatives of one town go on a visit to another town and they are there rated for a charity contribution they should pay it and on leaving they should bring the money with them to assist with it the poor of their own town it has been taught to the same effect if the men of one town go to another town and are there rated for a charity contribution they should pay it and when they leave they should bring the money back with them if an individual however goes to another town and is there rated for a charity contribution it is given to the poor of that town Arhuna once proclaimed a
Sellers whenever they desire so are many the sages however say that it may be sold in perpetuity save for four purposes for a bath for a tannery for a ritual bath or for a laundry Arjuna says it may be sold for turning into a courtyard and the purchaser may do what he likes with it. Gamara on Armadir's ruling how do people live in it the rent they pay would be interest Aryohan and replied Armadir gave this ruling on the basis of the view of Arjuna who said that interest which is only contingent is permitted as it has been taught if a man lent another remainder and the latter made a conditional sale to him of his field if the vendor takes the produce this is permitted but if the purchaser takes the produce it is forbidden Arjuna said that even if the purchaser takes the produce it is permitted said Arjuna further it happened once that Boethus Bizanin made a sale of his field with the permission of R. Eliezer Bezrai and the purchaser took the produce they said to him do. You cite that as a proof it was in fact the vendor who took the produce and not the purchaser on what point of principle did they differ on the question of contingent interest one authority Arjuna held that contingent interest is permitted and the other held that it is forbidden Rabba said all authorities agree that contingent interest is forbidden and the point at issue is the taking of interest on condition of returning it one authority Arjuna held that to take interest on condition of Returning it when the principal is returned is permitted while the other held that it is forbidden the sages say he may sell it in perpetuity etc. Rab Judah said in the name of Samuel it is permitted to a man to make water within four cubits of where prayers have been said said Arjuna what has he told us we have already learned it Arjuna says it may be sold for use as a courtyard and the purchaser may do what he likes in IT and even the rabbis did not forbid save in the synagogue itself. Since its sanctity is permanent but for the four adjoining cubits the sanctity of which is not permanent they did not make such a rule a tanner recited in the presence of Arnam and one who has just said prayers may go a distance of four cubits and make water and one who has made water may go a distance of four cubits and pray he said to him I grant you that one who has made water may go four cubits and pray this we have learned how far should he remove from it and from excrement four cubits but why should one who has prayed remove four cubits before making water if that is the rule you have sanctified all the streets of Nihardia say should wait the time it takes to go four cubits is that so I grant you that one who has made water should wait till he can go four cubits on account of drippings on his clothes but why should one who has just prayed wait long enough to go four cubits are as she replied because for the time it takes to go four cubits his mouth is still full of his prayer and his lips are still muttering at Nemonic ZLP and Arzake was asked by his disciples in virtue of what have you reached such a good old age he replied never in my life have I made water within four cubits of a place where prayers have been said nor have I given an appropriate epithet to my fellow nor have I omitted to perform the sanctification of the Sabbath day I had a grandmother who once sold her headdress so as to bring me wine for the sanctification of the day it was taught when she died she left him 300 barrels of wine and when he died he left his sons 3,000 barrels Arhuna once came before Rab girded with a string he said to him what is the meaning of this he replied I had no wine for sanctification and I pledged my girdle so as to get some he said may it be the will of heaven that you be one day smothered in robes of silk on the day when Rabbi his son was married Arhuna who was a short man was lying on a bed and his daughters and daughters in lost ripped clothes from themselves and threw them on him until he was smothered in silks when Rab heard he was chagrined and said why when I bless you did you not say the same to you sir R. Eliezer Bisham who was asked by his disciples in virtue of what have you reached such a good old age he replied never in my life have I made a shortcut through a synagogue nor have I stepped upon the heads of the holy people nor have I lifted my hands to say the priestly blessing without reciting a Blessing our Paradox was asked by his disciples in virtue of what have you reached such a good old age he replied never in my life have I allowed anyone to be before me at the house of study Talmud, Mas Mejla nor have I said grace before a cone nor have I eaten of a beast from which the priestly dues have not been given as our Isaac said in the name of our Yohan and it is forbidden to eat from an animal from which the priestly dues have not been given and our Isaac further said to eat from an animal from which the priestly dues have not been given is like eating people the law however is not as stated by him nor did I say grace before a cone this implies that this is a meritorious action but has not our Yohan and said if a Talmud Hakam allows even a high priest who is all ignoramus to say grace before him that Talmud Hakam commits a mortal offense as it says all that hate me Mazani I love death red not Mazani that hate me but Mazani that make me hated when our Yohan made. This remark he was thinking of equals Arni Hunya Bihakana was asked by his disciples in virtue of what have you reached such a good old age he replied never in my life have I sought respect through the degradation of my fellow nor has the curse of my fellow gone up with me upon my bed and I have been generous with my money I have not sought respect through the degradation of my fellow as illustrated by Arhuna who once was carrying a spade on his shoulder when our Hanabi Hanal I wanted to take it from him but he said to him if you are accustomed to carry in your own town take it but if not I do not want to be paid respect through your degradation nor did the curse of my fellow go up on my bed with me this is illustrated by Marzitra who when he climbed into his bed said I forgive all who have vexed me I have been generous with my money as a master has said job was generous with his money he used to leave with the shopkeeper a of exchange our Akiba asked Arni Hunya the great in. Virtue of what have you reached such a good old age his attendants came and beat him so he went and sat on the top of a day tree and said to him Rabbi seeing that it says alam why does it also say one there upon here Nihunya said he is a rabbinical student leave him alone he then answered his question saying one means unique in its flock and he said to him never in my life have I accepted presents nor have I insisted on retribution when wrong and I have been generous with my money I have not accepted presents as illustrated by our Eliezer who when presents were sent to him from the prince would not accept them and when he was invited there would not go he said to them do you not want me to live since it says he that hate gifts shall lie our zero when presents were sent to him from the prince would not accept them but when he was invited there he used to go saying they derive honor from my presence nor did I insist on retribution as Rabbi said he who waves his right to Retribution is forgiven all his sins as it says that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by transgression whose iniquity is forgiven the iniquity of him who passes by transgression Rabbi asked our Joshua B. Korha in virtue of what have you reached such a good old age he said to him do you begrudge me my life said Rabbi to him this is a point of Torah and it is important for me to learn he replied never in my life have I gazed at the countenance of a wicked man for so are you had and said it is forbidden to a man to gaze at the form of the countenance of a wicked man as it says were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat the king of Judah I would not look toward thee nor see the Eliezer said his eyes become dim as it says and it came to pass that when Isaac was old that his eyes were dim so that he could not see because he used to gaze at the wicked he saw but was that the cause has not our Isaac said let not the curse of an ordinary person ever seem of small account to thee for Rabbi Melech. Curse Sarah and it was fulfilled in her seat as it says behold he is for the covering Kesseth of the eyes red not Kesseth but Kesseth yet blinding both caused the affliction Rabbi said we learn it from here it is not good to respect the person of the wicked when he was about to depart life Rabbi said to him bless me he said to him may it be heaven's will that you attain to half my days not to their whole length he exclaimed shall those who succeed you he replied pastor cattle Abu IHI and Maniam and BIHI both left sayings on this subject one said may I be rewarded because I have never gazed at a Kutian and the other said may I be rewarded because I have never gone into partnership with a Kutian Arzero was asked by his disciples in virtue of what have you reached such a good old age he replied never in my life have I been harsh with my household nor have I stepped in front of one greater than myself nor have I meditated on the Torah in filthy alleys nor have I gone Four cubits without Torah and Tefillin, nor have I slept in the Beth Hamidrash either along or a short sleep, nor have I rejoiced in the downfall of my fellow, nor have I called my fellow by his nickname, or as some report family nickname Mishnah Arjuna said further, if a synagogue has fallen into ruins, it is not right to deliver funeral orations therein, nor to wind ropes, nor to spread nets, nor to lay out produce on the roof to dry, nor to use it as a shortcut as it says, and I will bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, which implies that their holiness remains even when they are desolate. If grass
Body and is there no way otherwise but say in the end of Mithmiswa will be kept there overnight nor to dress up in it. Rabbah said the sages and their disciples are permitted since our Joshua Belevi said what is the meaning of the rabbin in the rabbi's house nor to go into them in summer to escape the heat and in the rainy season to escape the rain. For instance, Rabbah and Ara Abi Mehenna were once standing and asking questions of Rabbah when a shower of rain came on they went into the synagogue. Saying why we have gone into the synagogue is not because of the rain but because the discussion of a legal point requires clarity like a clear day. Araha the son of Rabbah asked Arashi if a man has occasion to call another out of synagogue what is he to do? He replied if he is a rabbinical student let him say some halachah if he is a tana let him repeat a mishnah if he is a carol let him say a verse of scripture if none of these let him say to a child repeat me the last verse you have learned or Else let him stay a little while and then get up to deliver public funeral addresses in them. What is meant by a public funeral address are his dog gave as an example for instance a funeral address at which Arshi's hate is present. Arshi's hate mentioned as an example for instance a funeral address at which Arshi's dog is present. Raphram had a funeral address delivered for his daughter in law in the synagogue saying to pay honor to me and to the dead all the people will come. Arzara delivered a funeral address for a certain rabbinic student in the synagogue saying whether to pay honor to me or to pay honor to the dead all the public will come. Rashlakish delivered a funeral address for a certain rabbinical student who frequented the land of Israel and who used to repeat halashat before 24 rows of disciples. He said, Alas, the land of Israel has lost a great man. On the other hand, there was a certain man who used to repeat halashat sifra and sifra and tisifra and when he died. They came and said to our nominee, sir, will you deliver a funeral oration for him? And he said, how are we to deliver over him an address? Alas, a bag full of books has been lost. Observe now the difference between the rigorous scholars of the land of Israel and the saints of Babylon. We have learned in another place whoever makes use of a crown passeth away from the world. And Rush Lakish commented, this applies to one who accepts service from one who can repeat halasha. And Ullah said, a man may accept service from one who can repeat the four orders of the mission, but not from one who can also teach them. This is illustrated by the following story of Rush Lakish. He was once traveling along a road when he came to a pool of water, and a man came up and put him on his shoulders and began taking him across. He said to the man, can you read the scriptures? He answered, I can. Can you repeat the mission? He replied, I can repeat four orders of the mission. Rush Lakish thereupon said, you have four. Rocks and you carry Reshlakish on your shoulder, throw the son of Lakisha into the water. He replied, I would sooner that your honor tell me something. If so, he replied, Learn from me the stictum which was enunciated by Arzara. The daughters of Israel imposed spontaneously upon themselves the restriction that if they saw on their garments a spot of blood no bigger than a mustard seed, they waited for seven days without issue before taking a ritual bath. It was taught in the Tana de Beliahu. Whoever repeats Halashat may rest assured that he is destined for the future world, as it says his goings Halikath are to eternity read, not Halikath, but Halashat are rabbis taught Talmud. Mas Mejilah, the study of the Torah, may be suspended for escorting a dead body to the burying place and a bride to the canopy. It was recorded of Arjuna Bialai that he used to suspend the study of the Torah for escorting a dead body to the burying place and a bride to the canopy. When does this rule? Regarding the dead apply when there are not present sufficient numbers to pay him due honor but if sufficient numbers are available the study of the Torah is not suspended what numbers are sufficient are Samuel being said in the name of Rab 12,000 and in addition 6,000 trumpets or as according to another version 12,000 men of whom 6,000 have trumpets Ola said enough to make a procession extending from the burying ground to the town gate Arshis hate said. The withdrawal of the Torah should correspond to its delivery as its delivery was in the presence of 60 myriads so its withdrawal should be accompanied by 60 myriads this applies to one who knew by heart scripture and mission but for one who also taught the mission there is no limit it has been taught our Simon B.O. he said come and see how beloved are Israel in the sight of God and that to every place to which they were exiled the Shechina went with them they were exiled to Egypt and it Shechanah was with them as it says did I reveal myself unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt they were exiled to Babylon and the Shechanah was with them as it says for your sake I was sent to Babylon and when they will be redeemed in the future the Shechanah will be with them as it says then the Lord thy God will return with thy captivity it does not say here we have and he shall bring back but we ship and he shall return this teaches us that the Holy One blessed be he will return with them from the places of exile where is the Shechanah in Babylon Abbe said in the synagogue of Huzal and in the synagogue of Shafway of Ibn do not however imagine that it is in both places but it is sometimes in one and sometimes in the other said Abbe may I be rewarded because whenever I am within a part saying I go in and pray there the father of Samuel and Levi were sitting in the synagogue which moved and settled in Nihardia the Shechanah came and they heard a Sound of tumult and rose and went out. Arshi's hate was once sitting in the synagogue which moved and settled in Nihardia. When the Shechina came, he did not go out, and the ministering angels came and threatened him. He turned to him and said, Sovereign of the universe, if one is afflicted and one is not afflicted, who gives way to whom God thereupon said to them, Leave him, yet have I been to them as a little sanctuary. Our Isaac said this refers to the synagogue and houses of learning in Babylon. Our Eliezer says this refers to the house of our teacher in Babylon. Rabbi gave the following exposition. What is the meaning of the verse, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling on place? This refers to synagogues and houses of learning. Abbe said, Formerly I used to study at home and pray in the synagogue, but when I noticed the words of David, O Lord, I love the habitation beyond of thy house, I began to study also in the synagogue. It has been taught, our Eliezer Hakapper says, the synagogues and houses of learning. In Babylon will in time to come be planted in Eretz Israel as it says for as Tabor among the mountains and as Carmel by the sea came now can we not draw an inference here a fortiori or I seeing that Carmel and Tabor which came only on a single occasion to learn the Torah are implanted in Eretz Israel how much more must this be the case with the synagogues and houses of learning where the Torah is read and expounded Bar gave the following exposition what is the meaning of the verse why look yeah the scents on your mountains of peaks a bath coal went forth and said to them why do you desire litigation tears it in with Sinai are all full of blemishes as compared with Sinai it is written here Gabnatum with peaks and it is written elsewhere or crook back or a dwarf Arashi observed you can learn from this that if a man is arrogant this is a blemish in him it should not be used as a shortcut Copandria what is Copandria Rabbah said Copandria is as its name implies what does its name imply as if one were to say instead of going around the block mocking not or I will go through here Arabab said if a road passed through there originally it is permitted Arnam and B Isaac said if one goes in without any intention of using it as a shortcut he may afterwards use it as a shortcut and Arhelbo said in the name of Arhunah if one enters a synagogue to pray he may afterwards use it as a shortcut as it says but when the people of the land shall come before the Lord at the appointed seasons he that entereth by way of the north gate to worship shall go forth by way of the south gate if grass has grown in it it should not be plucked so as to excite compassion but it has been taught it should not be plucked and given as food to cattle but it may be plucked and left there the statement in our mission also refers to plucking and giving for food our rabbis taught burying grounds must not be treated disrespectfully cattle should not be fed in them nor should they. Water course be turned through them, nor should grass be plucked in them, and if it is plucked, it should be burnt on the spot out of respect for the dead. To what do these last words apply? Shall I say to the last clause, if it is burnt on the spot, what respect does this show for the dead? It must be then to the preceding clause's mission. If the new moon of Adar falls on Sabbath, the portion of Shechalim is read on that day. If it falls in the middle of the week, it is read on the Sabbath before and on. The next Sabbath, there is a break on the second of the special Sabbath. Sikr is read on the third. The portion of the red heifer on the fourth this month shall be to you on the fifth. The regular order is resumed. The regular reading I is interrupted for any special occasion for new moons, for Hanukkah, for Purim, for fast, for Mahamedoth, and for the Day of Atonement. Tomorrow we have learned in another place on the first of Adar proclamation is made with regard to the Shekels Talmud, Mas Mejil
says it is my food which is presented to me or shekels mentioned there yes the reason is based on the dictum of Artavi I can well understand the reason of the one who says that command the children of Israel should be read because sacrifices are mentioned in it but according to the one who says that when thou takest should be read our sacrifices mentioned there it is the shekels for the sockets that are mentioned there the reason is as our Joseph learned there were three contributions of the altar for the altar of the sockets for the sockets and of the repair of the house for the repair of the house there is a justification for the one who says that when thou takest should be read because he thus makes a difference between this new moon and other new moons but the one who says that command the children of Israel should be read what difference does he make he does make a difference because on other new moons six read in the portion of the day and one that of new moon whereas on this occasion all read in that of new moon this is a good answer for one who says that when the Mishnah says that the regular order is resumed it means the regular order of portions but according to the one who says that what it means is that the order of half hours is resumed and the order of Pentateuch portions has not been interrupted what difference is there between this new moon and others there is a difference because on other new moon six read in the portion of the day and one the special portion for new moon whereas on this occasion three read in the portion of the day and four in that of new moon on objection was raised when the new moon of Adar falls on Sabbath the portion of Shekalim is read and the chapter of Jehoiada the priest is said as half hour now according to the one who says that when thou takest should be said there is a good reason for reading Jehoiada the priest as half hour because it is similar in subject as it is written there the money of it persons for whom each man is rated but according to the one who says that my food which is presented to me is read is there any similarity there is on the basis of our topic's dictum the following was then cited in objection if it the new moon of Adar falls on the portion next to it the portion of Shekalim whether before or after they read it and repeat it now this creates no difficulty for one who holds that when thou takest is read because the regular portion containing this passage falls about that time but according to the one who says that my food which is presented to me is read does the portion containing that passage fall about that time yes for the people of Palestine who complete the reading of the Pentateuch in three years it has been taught in agreement with Samuel when the new moon of Adar falls on Sabbath the portion when thou takest is read and the half hour is about Jehoiada the priest or Isaac Nabaha said when the new moon of Adar falls on Sabbath three scrolls of the law are taken out of the ark and read out of from one the portion of the day from one the portion of new moon and from one when thou takest our Isaac B. Nabaha also said when the new moon of Tebeth falls on Sabbath three scrolls of the law are brought and read out of from one the regular portion from a second the portion of new moon and from a third that of Hanukkah both statements are required for if only the latter had been given I might think that in this case our Isaac required three scrolls but in the other case he followed the view of Rab who said that the portion of Shekalim is my food which is presented to me and therefore two would be enough therefore we are told that this is not so but why not state the former only and the other would not need to be stated one was inferred from the other it was stated if the new moon of Tebeth falls on a weekday our Isaac Nabaha says that three read the portion of new moon and one the portion of Hanukkah are from Haifa However says that three read the portion of Hanukkah and one that of new moon said Armani the opinion of our Isaac Nabaha is the more probable because when it is a question between the regular and the intermittent the regular takes precedence Arabin however said the opinion of Ardini is the more probable for what is it that causes a fourth man to read the new moon therefore the fourth ought to read the portion of the new moon what do we decide our Joseph said we take no notice of new moon while Rabbi said we take no notice of Hanukkah the law however is that we take no notice of Hanukkah and new moon is the main consideration it was stated if it the Sabbath of Shekalim falls when the portion and thou shalt command is read then six persons read from and thou shalt command to when thou takest and one from when thou takest to thou shalt also make a remark Talmud Mas Mejla, if that is done people will say that that is where they stop no said a six read from and thou Shall command to thou shalt also make and one repeats and reads from when thou takest to thou shalt also make the following was cited in objection to this if it the Sabbath of Shekalim falls on the Sabbath of the portion adjoining it whether just before or just after it is read and repeated now if we accept the view of Abbe this is quite in harmony with it but on the view of our Isaac Nabaha it does conflict with it does it not our Isaac Nabaha can answer you and on the view of Abbe does it create no difficulty we may allow the Sabbath before it but if it falls on the Sabbath after where do you find a repetition what you have to say in fact is that according to Abbe this portion of Shekalim is read on two successive Sabbaths so L2 can answer that it is read on two successive Sabbaths if it falls on the portion of when thou takest itself our Isaac Nabaha says that six read from thou shalt also make two and Moses assembled and one from when thou takest to thou shalt also Make Abbe strongly demur to the saying now people will say that we are reading backwards no said Abbe 6 read to and Moses assembled and one repeats from when thou takest to thou shalt also make it has been taught in agreement with Abbe if it falls on the Sabbath of when thou takest itself it is read on the Sabbath before it was stated if the new moon of Adar falls on Friday Rab says that the portion of Shekalim is read on the Sabbath before while Samuel says that it is read on it. Sabbath after Rab says it is read before because otherwise there will be a shortage in the days of the table Samuel says it is read after because after all the fifteenth day from the new moon falls on a Friday and the tables will not be taken out till the Sunday therefore we delay the reading of the portion of Shekalim we have learned if it falls in the middle of the week it is read on the Sabbath before and on the next Sabbath there is a break does not this rule apply even where it falls. On Friday, no only if it falls actually in the middle part of the week, come and here, which is the first Sabbath of the series, that in the week succeeding which the new moon of Adar falls, even if it is on the Friday, now do not the words even on Friday here, put Friday on the same footing as the middle of the week, so that just as when it falls in the middle of the week, we read before, so when it falls on Friday, we read before said Samuel, the words in the middle here mean on it, so to a ten of the school of Samuel taught on it, the same difference of opinion is found between ten aim and interruption can be made in the series of Sabbaths. This is the ruling of our Judah, the prince, our Simeon B. Eliezer says, no interruption is made, said our Simeon B. Eliezer, when do I rule that no interruption may be made when at new moon falls on Friday, but if it falls in the middle of the week, at the portion of Shekalim is read on the Sabbath before, even though that is still in Shabbat on it. Second Zikr etc. It was stated if Purim falls on Friday Rab says that the portion of Zakir is read on the Sabbath before while Samuel says it is read on the Sabbath after Rab says it is read on the Sabbath before so that the celebration of Purim should not precede the commemoration of the miracle Samuel says on the Sabbath after he can argue that since there are the walled cities which celebrate on the 15th celebration and commemoration come together we learned on the second Zikr now. When the new moon of Adar is on Sabbath Purim falls on Friday and he states on the second Zikr our Papa replied what is meant by second here the second to the break come and here which is the second Sabbath that in the week following which Purim falls even if on Friday now is not the Friday here mentioned meant to be on the same footing as the middle of the week so that just as when it falls in the middle of the week we read before so when it falls on Friday we read before said Samuel did. Proper reading is on it, and so a ten of the school of Samuel taught on it. If it falls on Sabbath itself, Arhuna said all authorities concur that the portion of Zakir is not read on the Sabbath before, whereas Arnaman said there is a difference of opinion on this point. Also, it was also stated, Our high B. Abba said in the name of our Abba who had it from Rabbi Purim falls on Sabbath, Zakir is read on the Sabbath before on the third the portion of the red heifer, etc. Our rabbis taught, which is the third Sabbath, the one which follows Purim. It was stated, Our Hamma Behanna said the Sabbath next to the new moon of Nisan. There is no conflict between these two statements. The one refers to where the new moon of Nisan falls on Sabbath, and the other to where it falls in the middle of the week on the fourth. This month shall be to you, our rabbis taught. If the new moon of Adar falls on Sabbath, we read Kitha and the account of Jehoiada as half arrow, which is the first Sabbath, the one in the week. Following which the new moon of Adar falls, even if on Friday on the second Sabbath Zakir is read and for half era I have visited, which is the second Sabbath, the one in the week following which Purim falls, even if on Friday on the third Sabbath the portion of the red heifer is read and for half era and I shall sprinkle on you,
Fourth part of the day and another part they confess and prostrate themselves before the Lord their God but cannot I interpret this in the reverse way do not imagine such a thing since it is written and were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the faithlessness of them of the captivity and I sat appalled unto the evening offering and it goes on and at the evening offering I rose up from my fasting mission on Passover we read from it. Section of the festivals in Leviticus on Pentecost seven weeks on New Year on the seventh day on the first of the month on the day of atonement after the death on the first day of tabernacles we read from the section of the festivals in Leviticus and on the other days of tabernacles the section of the offerings of the festival on Hanukkah we read the section of the dedication of the altar by the princes on Purim and Amalek came on new moons and on your new moons on Mahometh the account of the creation on fast days Talmud Mos Mejla the section of blessings and curses the section of curses must not be broken up but must all be read by one person on Monday and Thursday and on Sabbath at Minha the regular portion of the week is read and this is not reckoned as part of the reading for the succeeding Sabbath as it says and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the appointed seasons of the Lord which implies that it is part of their ordinance that each should be read in. It's season Gemara our rabbis taught on Passover we read from the section of the festivals and for half era the account of the Passover of Gilgal now that we keep two days Passover the half era of the first day is the account of the Passover in Gilgal and of the second day that of the Passover of Josiah on the other days of the Passover the various passages in the Torah relating to Passover are read what are these are Papa said the mnemonic is MAPU on the last day of Passover we read and it came to pass when God sent and as half era and David spoke on the next day we read all the firstborn and for half era this very day of a said nowadays the communities are accustomed to read draw the ox sanctify with money hue in the wilderness and send the firstborn on Pentecost we read seven weeks and for half era a chapter from Habakkuk according to others we read in the third month and for half era the account of the divine chariot nowadays that we keep two days we follow both courses but in the reverse order on New Year we read on the seventh month and for half era is Ephraim a darling son unto me according to others we read and the Lord remembered Sarah and for half era the story of Hannah nowadays that we keep two days on the first day we follow the ruling of the other authority and on the next day we say and God tried Abraham with his Ephraim a darling son to me for half era on the day of atonement we read after the death and for Hathorah for thus set the high and lofty one at Minha we read the section of forbidden marriages and for half era the book of Jonah are you had and said wherever you find mentioned in the scriptures the power of the Holy One blessed be he you also find his gentleness mentioned this fact is stated in the Torah repeated in the prophets and stated at the time in the sacred writings it is written in the Torah for the Lord your God he is the God of gods and Lord of lords and it says immediately afterwards he doth execute justice for the Fatherless and widow it is repeated in the prophets for the set the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy and it says immediately afterwards I dwell with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit it is stated at the time in the sacred writings as it is written extol him that writhe upon the skies whose name is the Lord and immediately afterwards it is written the father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows on the first day of tabernacles we read the section of the festivals in Leviticus and for half era behold a day cometh for the Lord nowadays that we keep two days on the next day we read the same section from the Torah but what do we read for half era and all the men of Israel assembled unto King Solomon on the other days of the festival we read the section of the offerings of the festival on the last festival day we read all the firstlings with the commandments and statutes which preceded and for half era and it was so that when Solomon had made an end on the next day we read and this is a blessing and for half era and Solomon stood Arunah said in the name of Arshis hate on the Sabbath which falls in the intermediate days of the festival whether Passover or Tabernacles the passage we read from the Torah is see thou sayest unto me and for half era on Passover the passage of the dry bones and on Tabernacles in that day when God shall come on Hanukkah we read the section of the princes and for half era on Sabbath. That of the lights in Zechariah should there fall two Sabbaths in Hanukkah on the first we read for half era the passage of the lights in Zechariah and on the second that of the lights of Solomon on Purim we read and Amalek came on new moon on your new moons if new moon falls on a Sabbath the half era is the passage concluding and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another if it falls on a Sunday on the day before the half era is and Jonathan said to him tomorrow is the new. Moon Arhuna said Talmud, Mas Mejla be if the new moon of it falls on a Sabbath the half era is the passage with the verse your new moons and your appointed seasons my soul hate they are a burden unto me what is the meaning of they are a burden unto me God said it is not enough for Israel that they sin before me but they impose on me the burden of considering what punishment I shall bring upon them on the ninth of itself what is the half era rap said the passage containing how is she become harlot what is the section from the Torah it has been taught others say but if ye will not hearken unto me or Nathan be Joseph says how long will this people despise me and some say how long shall I bear with this evil congregation have they said nowadays the custom has been adopted of reading from the Torah when thou shalt beget children and for half era I will utterly consume them on Mahometh the account of the creation whence is this rule derived said RMI but for the Mahomet the heaven and earth would not be firmly established as it says but for my covenant which continues day and night I had not set the statutes of heaven and earth and it is written and he said O Lord God whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it said Abraham before the Holy One blessed be he sovereign of the universe perhaps God forbid Israel will sin before thee and thou wilt do to them as thou didst to the generation of the flood and the generation of the division he answered. Not so he then said before him sovereign of the universe by what shall I know this he said take me a heifer of three years old etc he then said before him sovereign of the universe this is very well for the time when the temple will be standing but in the time when there will be no temple what will befall them he replied to him I have already fixed for them the order of the sacrifices whenever they will read the section dealing with them I will reckon it as if they were bringing me an offering. And forgive all their inquities on fast days the portion of blessings and curses is read and there must be no break in the reading of the curses whence is this rule derived our high began to reply in the name of R.C. because scripture says my son despise not the chastening of the Lord Rushlake said it is because a blessing should not be said for chastisement how then is the reader to do attend a talk he commences his reading with a verse before them and concludes it with a verse. After them said obey this rule was laid down only for the curses in Leviticus but in the curses in Deuteronomy a break may be made what is the reason in the former Israel are addressed in the plural number and Moses uttered them on behalf of the Almighty in the latter Israel are addressed in the singular and Moses uttered them in his own namely Bibi was once reading the curses in Deuteronomy in the presence of Arunah hesitatingly said Arunah to him do just as you please the rule. Against making a break applies only to the curses in Leviticus, but in those in Deuteronomy a break may be made. It has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says Ezra made a regulation for Israel that they should read the curses in Leviticus before Pentecost and those in Deuteronomy before New Year. What is the reason of a or you may also say Rush Lakish said so that the year may end along with its curses. I grant you that in regard to the curses in Deuteronomy you can say so that the year should end. Along with its curses, but as regards those in Leviticus is Pentecost a new year. Yes, Pentecost is also a new year as we have learned on Pentecost is the new year for fruit of the tree. It has been taught our Simeon B. Eliezer says if old men say to you throw down and young men say to you build up, throw down and do not build up because destruction by old men is construction and construction by boys is destruction and the example is Rehoboam, son of Solomon or rabbis taught the place in the Torah. Where they leave off in the morning service on Sabbath is the place where they begin at Minha. The place where they leave off at Minha on Sabbath is the place where they begin on Monday. The place where they leave off on Monday is the place where they begin on Thursday. The place where they leave off on Thursday is the place where they begin on the next Sabbath. This is the ruling of our Mayor Arjuna. However, says that the place where they leave off in the morning service on Sabbath is the place where they begin on Sabbath. Mina on Monday on Thursday and on the next Sabbath. Arzera said the Halachah is that the place where they leave off in the morning service on Sabbath is the place where they begin at Minha on Monday on Thursday and on the next Sabbath. Why does he not say
A seam arshifit should further set in the name of Aryohan and one who rolls together a sefer Torah should roll it from without and should not roll it from within and when he fastens it he should fasten it from within and should not fasten it from without arshifit should further set in the name of Aryohan and if ten have had a reading of the Torah the senior among them rolls up the sefer Torah he who rolls it up receives the reward of all of them since our Joshua be Levi said if ten have had a reading of it. Torah the one who rolls it up receives the reward of all of them the reward of all of them thank you no say rather he receives a reward equal to that of all of them Arshavisha further said in the name of Aryohan and whence do we know that we may avail ourselves of a chance utterance as an omen because it says and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this applies however only if one hears the voice of a man in town and of a woman in the country and only if it says yes yes or no no are. Shavisha further said in the name of Aryohan and if one reads the scripture without a melody or repeats a mission without a tune of him the scripture says wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good etc. Abbe strongly demurred to the saying because he cannot sing agreeably are you to apply to him the verse ordinances whereby they shall not live no this verse is to be applied as by our Meshur who said if two scholars live in the same town and do not treat one another's halashik. Pronouncements respectfully of them the verse says I gave them also statutes that were not good and ordinances whereby they should not lie are parnak said in the name of Aryohan and whoever takes hold of a scroll of the Torah without a covering is buried without a covering without a covering thank you say rather without the covering protection of religious performances without religious performances thank you no said Abbe he is buried without the covering protection of that religious performance Arjane the son of the old Arjane said in the name of the great Arjane it is better that the covering of the scroll should be rolled up with the scroll and not that the scroll of the Torah should be rolled up inside the covering and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the appointed seasons of the Lord it is part of their observance that the section relating to each one of them should be read in its season our rabbis taught Moses laid down a rule for the Israelites that they should inquire and give expositions concerning the subject of the day the laws of Passover on Passover the laws of Pentecost on Pentecost and the laws of Tabernacles on Tabernacles.